you know, if you, if you raise the oxidative state in the body, you actually raise your mood, you raise your emotional state. You know that elevated emotional tears, emotions like passion, elation, joy, arousal, libido, every single one of these emotional states as a component of its molecular structure require oxygen. Everyone does it when they go to sleep at night, but then they wake up at 6.30 in the morning and they have coffee and a little bit of breakfast. And then they have coffee and a little bit of breakfast and then they eat something before lunch and then they eat at lunch and then eat a snack afterwards and then you eat dinner late and then they snack right before they go to bed. That's horrible. You're eating, you're eating for 18 hours, 12, 16, 18 straight hours you're eating, which means your body's not doing any waste elimination. What does it do to your blood? Thickens your blood and fills your blood full of things that your body's got to get rid of. I mean, your liver's working overtime, even if you eat a clean diet. Today in the studio, folks, I've got a real treat for you. If you're into health, if you're into optimized health and nutrition, we have Gary Brecka. What's cracking? Hey, man, what's going on? Gary Breck is with Streamline Health. You're also with 10X Health. I am. You're also with a bunch of other health things. Yes. Health. You're all about health. Yeah. We just um, uh, sold to the Cardone organization and formed a joint venture to that's a lot of lives. That's big stuff. That is big Old stuff. Grant's a businessman. And Elaine is the queen of business. Both very true statements. Yeah. And so, so folks, while we talk to Gary today, I'm going to get one of his fancy deals <laughs> now this deal here is about ready to turn me what 20 years younger yeah rewind the uh, aging clock it's a myers cocktail with a high dose vitamin c drip mm-hmm. so it's going to detoxify hydrate boost your immune system and this is madison that's madison. travel I, with madison i do it's my daughter Oh, it is? Yep. Oh, I'll be dipped in butter. That's why we look alike. <laughs> I don't just hire staff that looks like me. I make Yeah, it. but like you ever have perverse when 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 like she leaves? Oh god. <laughs> they don't know it's your daughter. Well, I actually I actually forget to tell people she's my daughter and I'll call her honey or sweetie or something like, you know, just without thinking and the, you know, the patient's like, "Wow, that's uh you're a little friendly with your staff there." I'm like, "Well, it's my daughter." <laughs> yeah, that's dangerous. It is. When when when, when she leaves the room, you know, are you sticking that, Gary? Are you sticking that? Yeah, that wouldn't go well. There's pervs out there in the world. Mm-hmm. They're dirty dogs. Most of them are not my patients, though. I don't have a lot of dirty dog pervs. No, as patients, no. You test them? Um, no, I just don't get in proximity of them. Okay, so what are we doing here? Let's 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 explain to the audience exactly right. what so, this is. So basically, what you're doing is you're using a saline. Okay. Um, which is, an, everybody asks me, well, why did they use saline? Uh, because most people think that salt is dehydrating. Mm-hmm. Actually, uh, salt is very hydrating. The reason why they give you saline IVs in the in the emergency room when you're dehydrated is because they help contents in that fluid leave your blood and go into your tissues. Mm-hmm. So what we want is we want all these vitamins to get out of the blood and get into the tissue. So we put it in saline. Um, and you got magnesium chloride, which roots out inflammation in every corner of your body. You got vitamin C, uh, sorbic acid, which is like um, uh, natural, almost like an antibiotic. It really scours the blood of free radicals. Um, you got calcium gluconate. You got the full suite of B vitamins, and you got something called hydroxycobalamin, which is a form of B12, really mm-hmm. readily available. Well, that's a little bit of a slow drip, isn't it? Yep, that's a slow drip. How do we crank that up a smidge? That doesn't turn it up. We wanna, we wanna. Oh, we can roll. We want to push yeah. that shit in there. <laughs> it's like this. There you go. Yeah. Boom. Oh, you're rolling. Is that might, might be a little dehydrated if there, you bud. raise that up, it'd go far faster, you wouldn't try. it? That's what I'm talking about right there. <laughs> now, now, IVs directly into the bloodstream. Yes. First of all, let's go back. Mm-hmm. Where, 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 how do you know all this stuff? Um... Well, interestingly, um, I didn't get my start in the wellness space. Uh, I actually got my start in the mortality space. I was a mortality hey, expert. Hey, I can taste some shit right now. Yeah, that's good. That's B12 is a metal. So you're tasting the metallic. You have a metallic taste in your tongue? Yeah. That's really good. It's a good sign. Are there any veins popping in my head? <laughs> you're yeah, going to be pregnant I when taste time uh, done running. Taste something. Yeah. No, you're tasting the metal. Like head. Yep. B12 is a metal. So Almost. it actually, your tongue is fraught with blood vessels. So B12 shows up in the blood vessels. It actually hits your taste buds from the inside out. So that's a good sign and it's absorbing. All right. So the reason I'm doing it live on the podcast mm-hmm. is because I wanted to be able to tell you whether this shit works or not live. Because, you know, a lot of these guys come on. I'll People will call me afterwards. Hey, does this shit work? I don't know. 
like I did one with these Walmart guys and, you know, the drop shippers. And right. Like, Does this work? It's like, I don't know yet. Like, you know, you got to give me some time, you know, to get it set up. Mm-hmm. So I figured, you know what? Let's just put this on while we're doing it. That was I can taste vitamins. Yes. <laughs> so I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. It's a really good sign. It means that's not no longer in your blood and it's left your tissues. It's and, in your taste buds. And not only that, earlier you took my blood and you took a swab. What was the blood for? So the blood is so that we can look at your hormone balance, your nutrient deficiencies, and how well you're controlling blood sugar. Because, um, you know, my previous life, um, I was a mortality expert. And so I was tasked. Why? Insurance? Well, Were you, you an you, actuarian? No, it's different than an actuarial. Um, an actuary puts you on an actuarial curve, right? You're on one, I'm on one. Everybody listening to this podcast is on an actuarial curve. Um, you know, if you're a 29 year old female, you have like expectancy of X years, right? So that's an actuarial curve. But what the insurance company wants to know before they bind millions of dollars at risk on your life or guarantee an annuity or pay you for a reverse mortgage mm-hmm. or any number of other financial services instruments is they want to know specifically how many more months does Brad Lee or does this person have left on earth? Mm. And so I was tasked with predicting mortality to the month. And the way that we did it uh, was we looked for the absence of optimal health. You see, every, every human being leaves this earth the same way. We all die of something called hypoxia, which is lack of oxygen to the brain. That's the definition of death. So if we know that that's how we leave this earth, then if we stop thinking about hypoxia as an event, like a you know, heart attack or a gunshot wound or a stroke or a bus, and we start thinking of it as a slope, how quickly am I becoming so hypoxic that I'm no longer going to occupy this planet? Or how slowly? And that is the definition of optimal health. Lack of oxygen to the cellular level or to the brain? Well, I'll tell you this. I mean, I, I, I say this all the time. If you ever heard me speak or listen to another podcast, I say if I was to boil 22 years of clinical research and mortality down to a single sentence, it would be this. The presence of oxygen is the absence of disease. That is the most important statement you'll hear for the balance of your lifetime. I in forget this name. On health. Otto Warble, maybe. I don't know. Who? <clears throat> no. 1930s. A guy by the name of Otto something or another okay. won a Nobel Prize for basically identifying the cause of cancer, which was the Hypoxia. lack of oxygen. Hypoxia. At, at the cellular level, and people don't understand, and, and by the way, hydration is a big no doubt. killer, yep. but people don't understand that the lack of oxygen at the, at, the, at the cellular level causes death and cancer and, and problems, and I, I should introduce you to a, to a company here. It's called Cocoon. Mm. It's basically you lay in this water, and it's liquid oxygen, mm. and it gets the oxygen to the cellular level. Oh, yeah. A doctor's daughter had stage four pancreatic cancer. They said, mm-hmm. go get your affairs in order. You got about three months to live. Okay. She flew to her dad, in, in, who lives in Hungary, who is a specialist in cancer oncology. Mm. He put her in this water, and she's alive today. The presence of oxygen is the no, absence of disease. No pancreatic cancer, obviously mm-hmm. not dead. And these spas that she has called Cocoon Water, and the, the reason they call it Cocoon water you remember that movie cocoon mm-hmm. where the old men jumped in the bath with the aliens in it yeah and so so that's why they call it that but that's but that's where i learned that from his very name true yeah his name's dr Lyons, but he said you know we've we've known medicine's known this since 1930s so how do you get oxygen to the cellular level well you know knowing that oxygen and the presence of oxygen is the absence of disease we have to get more oxygen into the body and then we have to improve how the body uses oxygen which is one of the things we look at on a blood panel. So a lot of times a physician will look at a a blood panel, a special area called the uh, CBC, the complete blood count. And if things are in the normal range, then they say everything's fine. Come back and see me in six months or a year. And you guys will see that from my blood? Oh, we'll see it in your blood. Now, I read people's micro expressions pretty well. Mm -hmm. And when she was taking my blood, I said, what? Yeah, you sensed that we were looking at each other. And you all went, because you guys real quick went, yeah, we did a little scan. Your eyes all went, <laughs> like, hey, what was that? Yeah, your uh, hematocrit, your blood viscosity was It was high. a little thick. Yeah. So here in a minute or whenever that's done, we're going to drop it mm-hmm. um, and then take some blood out. Put the same amount of fluid in and you take the same amount of blood out because when people donate blood, they think that they get nauseous or lightheaded from the loss of blood. That's not true. They get lightheaded from the loss of pressure. So if you keep the pressure the same by putting the same amount of fluid in that you take out, then you keep the pressure the same. 
Yeah. Our system's fixed. If you pull blood out, pressure drops, and people get lightheaded. Interesting. So you're not going to get lightheaded at all. In fact, you're going to feel great. Well, your blood pressure raises when you get IVs anyway, don't they? Slightly, because you're increasing the pressure. Yeah, you're so, putting more liquid in there. Right. So you just temporarily increase the pressure. I was telling you that if you look at the incidence of cardiovascular disease between men and women, you'll see that men lead women by a huge margin until women stop menstruating. And then there's a parabolic spike and they approximate men in the incidence of cardiovascular disease. And the reason for that is because they stop turning their blood over. So one of the simplest things that you can do to achieve optimal health and optimal blood status is to donate blood on a regular basis. See, most people wouldn't know that. So that's one of those tricks. All you have to do is just donate blood every what? Great biohack and it's free. What, 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 how often? Minimum every six months, but I prefer you do it every um, three to six months. So every three months, go in, give some blood. It helps people live, saves, especially if you've got a rare blood type. Too. Saves three lives, yep. Um, I saves doubt, three lives. I doubt, uh, you know, O positive, which is me, mm -hmm. is anything rare. But as you all know, I'm a blessed individual. Would, <laughs> would, someone, be, would, would someone be lucky to get my blood work back? No question. I mean, I'm I already looking at your blood. I can tell that I've got patients that would kill to have those, that, your blood. Because when you look at the oil on the top of the blood, you know, most of the time you'll see that it's, um, it's turbid, has something um, called cytokines, and it's got, uh, it's, it's just turbid. It looks like it's milky. When it's clear, like really pure olive oil, that's when your triglycerides, your blood fats are nice and nice and low. And people are really, really concerned about cholesterol. I told people to stop worrying so much about cholesterol, worry about blood fat. You see, it's not the level of cholesterol that poses a risk. It's the size of the cholesterol molecule. So I've got a 43 resting heart rate. People are like, dude, that's incredible. That's incredible. Now that's I Lance find Armstrong out, territory. Well, now I find out my triglycerides are almost non-existent, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. I had olive oil. Things are heading the right way, up. man, in your but, case. But like, what, what, what's the cause of this? Well, optimal health is, um, you know, partially in your genetics. Uh, so one of the things that I... I really encourage people to do is get a genetic test and look at the five major actionable genes in the human body. See, one of the most... Well, we did that too. That's the swab. Yeah, we did a cheek swab. Yeah, I want to get there too. That's and everyone treatment. should do that. Everyone should do that. Because you do it once in your life and then you know. People are supplementing just for the sake of supplementing right now. They have no idea why they're taking curcumin or turmeric or salt palmental or camomile. Or worse, they're not taking anything. Or they're not taking anything. Or they're taking a Fred Flintstone vitamin. Oh, which does cyanocobalamin. Don't get me started on that. Yeah. Cyanide-based B12. Wow. Cyanide-based B12. Just marinate on that for a second. That is. We make vitamins in this country out of hydrogen cyanide. The same thing we make chemical weapons from, we make from, um, we make vitamins from. Yeah, if we go down that rabbit hole, I think this country is run by big pharma. And yeah, they don't I don't want you I healthy. I definitely go, don't want to go down that route. I don't at all. think they want you healthy. But I will tell you, your listeners that are listening right now, spin your bottles of supplements around. Look for that word cyanocobalamin. And if that's the form of B12 that's in your supplement, throw it right in the trash. Cyanocobalamin. Cyanocobalamin stands for cyanide. Now, most people don't know, but what that'll do is increase the blood flow to the erector pili. <laughs> I'm learning something new today. I didn't know we had an erector pili. Oh, you definitely yeah. do. <laughs> we all do. Okay, and, and, and sometimes when our erector pili is stimulated, usually with the polyunsaturated hydrocarbons that flow through the medulla oblongata, base of the brain, <laughs> that, that will make your hair stand on end, and that is your erector pili. Okay. And then most people will flex their orbicularis oris, so their orbicularis oculi, because they're, they're like, whoa, you know, it's just an mm -hmm. excitement. Yeah, it's just it's just being startled or excited. Yeah, or or the levator labi superior so That's, that's my favorite that's, muscle in the face. So that's right. Most people don't know that face. I was going to be a doctor. Oh, yes. All right. I studied it. I know every bone How in about the human these? body. Every bone. Yeah. Well, I used to. Body? What's the only bone in the human body not connected to another bone? I would say, um, hmm, coccyx. Uh, well, what do you mean? They're all connected, except for maybe... Except, except for one. Hold There's on. only one well, bone that's not connected to another bone. A bone? A bone. An actual bone. An actual bone. Is it in your ear? Um, it is not in your ear. There's three bones in your ear. Hammer, yeah, anvil, anvil and hammer, and stirrup. Yeah. You hammer, quiz anvil, me. And you stapes. quiz me. And what? Hammer, anvil, and stapes. They were malleus incus and stapes is the technical name, but hammer, anvil, and stirrup is good. Well, I mean, but all bones are connected to something. Except one. Except one? Except one bone is not connected to another bone. Well, There's one bone you know in your body. You know, ain't, you know it ain't the leg bone because that's connected to the hip bone. <laughs> Femur is connected to the pelvis, yes. <laughs> yeah. What bone is that? The hyoid bone. It's the bone hyoid. Floats in the in neck. Your neck. Yep. 
It's a higher. So what's it connected to? It's not connected to another bone. It's free floating. What's it connected to? It's just a stabilizer bone. It's actually just suspended in soft tissue. Gives stability to you. Throw if I your punch you in the hiatus, That's what's it called? Hi- hyoid. <laughs> hyoid. A hiatus. Could, it, could, you, could I break your hyoid by cracking you in the neck? Oh, yeah, for sure. Is that what kills people? Yes. Interesting. Mm-hmm. I, I just picked up a new piece of trivia. Yep. You know, I really do know that 206 human bones in the in the body. Wow. That's I great. didn't know. I wouldn't have guessed the hyoid. hyoid. I forgot that one. But when I was in, believe it or not, like I think it was fifth grade, mm-hmm. they gave us a skeletal and a muscular map. Mm-hmm. And we had to write down all the bones in the human body, all 206 of them. Wow. And forever I've I've remembered them. That's great. It's the craziest thing. And muscles. Yeah. So like people now are like, you know, I broke my kneecap. Well, that's the patella, son. Yeah. <laughs> I broke my patella. collarbone. That's the clavicle, my friend. Yes. So I still remember this shit, but uh, that's why I wanted to drop some knowledge, impress people with my polyunsaturated hydrocarbons. Yeah. <laughs> and and there is a medulla oblongata. Um, that's the I, base there, of the brain. Yeah, there is a medulla oblongata. I'm just not aware of the other connections you talked about but well it's, there is it's definitely gibberish <laughs> it's medical gibberish yeah but the electric the um erector pili mm-hmm. is the muscle that makes your hair stand up mm. and the orbicularis oris that's the mouth muscle yep yep and oculi, that's Orbic- your eye muscle mm-hmm. yep make you smile make, make you the frontalis and the master and and then what about your sternoclavomastoid sternocleidomastoid yep that's you know what that is yeah it goes from the mastoid process to your um sternum that's right. Yeah, to the medial part of the clavicle, above the sternum. See, now this is this is, you know, deep shit. <laughs> I know. I think we're probably losing half the listeners right now. You know well, what the longest no, the li- muscle in the human body is? Well, what 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 is? You know what the longest muscle in the human body is? On mine, I do. <laughs> <laughs> you know the largest mm-hmm. organ in the human body? Mm. The skin. Yeah, very true. Most people don't know that. And most people skin don't is know. an organ. Yes, and you can use the skin to biohack your body. In fact, one of my favorite biohacking tricks is to turn the skin into a primary um, route of waste elimination. And you can do three days of liver detoxification in 20 minutes in a dry sauna or an infrared sauna. You can do the same thing in um, in very cold temperatures, ice bathing. By the way, if you guys want to follow Gary, go to Instagram is your main one. Yes. At Gary Brecka, B-R-E-C-K-A, at Gary Brecka, right? Right. Um, and DM him if you want to get some information from him regarding your health. Because you, you basically handle all the celebs and a lot of the athletes and a lot of the big wigs. Grant Cardone, everyone said, well, he got ripped and you know looking great for his age. Mm-hmm. He's he's on your deal. So much so that he basically invested with you. He wants well, to. He, sp- yeah, more than invested. He bought our company. Oh, he did? He bought our company. And for how we, much? A lot. <laughs> Life-changing for me. I mean, more money than I ever thought I'd have. I'll be damned. Did, did he did he tend to uh, earlier? Did he mention like who helped him start that whole ten x thing? <laughs> I think did your you, name came up in in very. Yeah, I don't circles. know if Ken knows that or not. Yeah, the genesis of ten uh, x. Oh, uh, come on now. Yeah. Well, dude, he uh, speaks highly of you. But Grant's a good businessman, dude. So you're 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 lucky right. to have him on board because, dude, you can't fail so with blessed. Grant Cardone on board. So blessed. I don't th- I've, I don't think I've ever seen him fail anything except backgammon. He got yeah. so pissed, I had to lose to him. Oh, I've lost many a backgammon game to that man, and it's frustrating. He loves backgammon. Backgammon is fun with that cube. No, you don't play with that not, cube, it's boring. Oh, it's he was the one that taught me about that cube. He said it changes the whole game. He won't play without it. No. Um, I swear he controls the dice with his mind because sometimes they'll hit, there'll be a specific combination that he has to have where he's going to lose the game, and bang, he rolls that, and it's so frustrating. Yeah, it is. Like it drops out of the sky. He gets lucky. I'm launching he's a an lucky investigation. De- he's a lucky devil as well. <laughs> but you got him looking young. You got yep. him looking sharp. He's in the best shape he's ever yep. been in, best feeling. So, folks, if you guys are interested in doing this, like the big wigs, the celebs out there, can't name them all. Can't, can yep. I name any? Um, I'd rather you not because I don't know which ones are public about it and which ones aren't. I mean, I can talk about some that are public, like, you know, rap artists like French Montana. Yeah, but um, you do, but you do all kinds of things, IV drips, yeah. just all kinds of things for them. But yes. people listening, they can get their blood work through you, they and then the blood the work. swab. What? Why is that one so important? I think the cheek swab is the most important thing that you'll do in in your adult lifetime, or for your children, because we assume that when we put things into the human body, that everybody uses raw materials the same way, and that's absolutely not true. Like, um, just take a simple thing like uh, folic acid. 
right? It's the most prevalent nutrient in the human diet. Okay. It's, it's the, it's required to be sprayed on all white flour, white rice, white bread, white pasta is all sprayed with folic acid. Well, 44% of the population has a gene mutation that does not allow them to process folic acid. So it's useless in 44% of the population. In fact, it's a leading cause of postpartum depression in pregnant females. What they do is they're told by their OBGYN when they get pregnant to take folic acid because they're told that'll avoid neural tube defects. What happens is 44% of women can't methylate that folic acid. So not only does it not prevent neural tube defects, it leads to depression. And then when the pregnancy ends, they stop taking the prenatal vitamin and they blame the depression on the pregnancy instead of blaming it on the vitamin. So if we were to understand what each human processes and what they don't, then we could supplement them just for the deficiency that their body has. How many people out there are like way worse off than they can imagine? Well, I mean, most people are ticking time bombs um, with what's called modifiable risk factors. You know, in the, in the prediction of, of, of death and in the, in the mortality business, the one thing that struck us over and over and over and over again, and sadly, we were not allowed to have any contact with the, with the patients and the, and the uh, medical records we were reading, the life expectancies we were predicting, we weren't allowed to contact the patient. But um, what we saw over and over and over again were what's called modifiable risk factors. The leading cause of not only death, but poor, poor lifespan, not just poor, I mean, uh, poor health span, not just poor lifespan, were modifiable risk factors. Simple things like low red blood cell count, clinical deficiencies in vitamin D3. People are being treated for rheumatoid arthritis right now all over this country that do not have rheumatoid arthritis. They have a simple deficiency in vitamin D3. They're treating, they're being treated for depression and anxiety and ADD, ADHD, OCD, and all these supposed psychiatric illnesses that are actually none of those illnesses. They're simple deficiencies in raw material. Like, for example, I've, I've had my whole life until recently um, severe ADHD. And anybody that knows me would be like, yes, he's super ADHD, right? Squirrel. Um, and uh, yeah, my you know fiance kid, Do you know what a, uh, a kid with ADHD has for breakfast? I don't know. You want to ride bikes? <laughs> Well, hey, we'll take a kid with ADHD. Let's talk about a child with ADHD. Um, well, they said I, I was that. Yeah, so you, attention deficit disorder is not really attention deficit disorder. It's attention overload disorder. What they have is an issue, uh, an issue with quieting the mind. Their body's deficient in certain amino acids and raw materials, so their mind doesn't degrade thought. So it allows too many thoughts to come into the mind and compete um, for attention. So it's actually not an attention deficit disorder. It's an attention overload disorder. If I we thought could, it was an attention boredom disorder, meaning, in other words, I, I could pay attention if I wanted to. But correct. If, if you were if you were boring, that's me, an excellent point because you don't have attention deficit disorder if you can pay attention, right? So by definition, it's off. And the reason for that is you think about kids. Forty four percent of the population that has this gene mutation means that forty four percent of kids have it which means 44% of children cannot methylate folic acid. And what do they have for breakfast? Cereal, which is all fortified or enriched with folic acid. By the way, that's what those terms mean. Fortified or enriched is the government's way of fancifying spraying it with a chemical. Right? They want to make it sound like it's a good thing because the cereal is fortified. Cereal is enriched. Um, well, it's sprayed with folic acid. That's what the ingredients just say. You put that much folic acid into a child that cannot methylate folic acid, and it's a it's a behavioral disaster waiting to happen. I mean, folic acid is like cocaine for six-year-olds. It just makes their mind race, it's ricochet off the wall. And we feed these kids breakfast cereal and Pop-Tarts and white flour and, and white bread before they go off to school, and that's why it's a full-contact sport to get them into the car. It's now, school. when I was young, they, they tried to give me Ritalin or whatever mm -hmm. it was called. My parents said, pound sand ain't, ain't happening. So they never Good gave job. me anything. But what's crazy is that is the... Second grade teacher let me sm uh, not. I was gonna say smoke weed. Smoke weed? Wow. No. <laughs> second grade. <laughs> they let me drink coffee in mm -hmm. second grade. No doubt. And coffee would put me to sleep, and they'd let me sleep in the class, so I did not mess with the other kids. Yes. Because yeah, because I, I mean I was. They said hyperactive, you know, and ADHD, mm -hmm. but it, but it but it wasn't that. You know what it turned out to be? Mm. They moved me grade. They moved me up a grade. And then I started paying attention. Like it was almost like according challenge. to challenge. You're being challenged. Well, yeah. Like before, I was, it was like too easy for me. And what's weird is I was born in '69. 
Mm-hmm. Well, you know how sometimes when the year changes, just changes because it's January, you accidentally write the year before. Well, they they made a birth certificate that said 68. This was back when they hand wrote. There was mm. nothing digital. Mm-hmm. So they hand wrote January 27th, 1968, when it was actually 69. The year had changed. Mm. But nurse wrote 68. So I had a birth certificate that said I was one years old the day I was born. Ah. So, and we got that copy. I, I, mean, I still have it. So my parents used that birth certificate to put me in school when I was five. So I was smaller, less mm. mature, you know, and I think that had something to do with it. And it turns out, no, it was just I was super smart, mm. I guess, and 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 second yeah, grade. I mean, shit people with it. ADHD have have uh, ADD, ADHD. They're told they have those kinds of disorders. Are usually what we call consummate overachievers. They develop what's called consummate overachiever profile. They set very very high standards for themselves, even as children. Right, and they judge the success or lack thereof of their day by how many tasks they get done on a on a task list that they set for themselves. They're really they they drive themselves or they're internally driven. You guys keeping an eye on this so I don't get no air bubbles. Oh no, it won't. It won't go. It'll just stop. I now, see you getting. What am I supposed to feel like? Because I kind of feel he, but see? not really. <laughs> <laughs> kind of um, though. Well, the reason why you feel he is because those B vitamins are uh, uh, solving. I kind of like the way my mouth tastes. Yeah. That's B12. B12. I like it. it yeah. I almost feel high a little bit. Yeah. Like, can we just keep that You're going? High on your own supply. Yeah. How, what if someone did this every single day? You wouldn't want to do it every single day because that's going to last more than 48 hours. So you just, you're just piling vitamins on top of vitamins for the sake of, of doing it. All right. Um, but once a week for sure. Okay. And then, okay, so let's get to the swab though. Mm-hmm. You, you, you do that swab, which you guys did for me. Yep. That swab is going to tell you my markers. Yes. And then what's those markers going to do? Save my life? Um, well, they they're very well could save your life. So Cause what they're, might they're, you see? Well, I might see that you don't um, methylate certain nutrients. And you think, for example, that you have um, people that have anxiety um, or suffer from depression or addiction. Um, if you look at these disorders, very often they are deficiencies in raw materials. They're not actually the presence of a disease. They're the absence of a raw material in the human body. Like D3? Like like D three like B vitamins iron. like um like iron like L methionine magnesium zinc very important a. like metals um, K two yep K two you need to put K two in with vitamin D three to help calcium uh, get into the bone so um you know vitamin D three that's that's just by far and away the symbol single most important nutrient in the human body it's and the a lot only of vitamin deficient makes more than eighty five percent of the population is clinically deficient it's the second leading cause of morbidity in COVID. Clinical deficiency in vitamin D3. It's a, it's a when you say clinical, issue. that means extreme. It means extreme, below thirty, yeah, less than thirty nanograms. Because I went to this place and they took my blood, and the guy said, "Yo, you take D3?" I said, "Yeah." He goes, "Yeah, because you're like your levels are perfect, and everybody's yep. usually, you know, I I was gonna try to sell it to you. Yeah, you, you, you want it between sixty it. and eighty. Yeah, and I said, and I said, no, I take D3 on every single day, and he goes, smart. Linked to a lower incidence of breast cancer in females. So that's all. But maybe that's why my blood looks so damn good. That's partially why it looks so good, for sure. I mean, it's it's sunlight. You know, the, the human beings only make a single vitamin. There's hundreds of vitamins in your bloodstream right now. You're only capable of making one. Do you know vitamin the, D3? Do you, do you know the sun gives out D3? Do you know the number one absorber of D3 from or D from the sun skin? What part? There's one part that's a oh, one part of the skin. Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, your human body. One part. What part? Scrotum. <laughs> I actually did have someone at dinner the other night tell me that he tans his, uh, the back door. I'm like, first of all, that's a vision that I can't seem to get out of my mind. And how, at what point in your life did you figure that out? Well, it's, it's, I mean, it's one thing to be naked in the sun, you know, nude sunbathing, but how do you figure out how to get it, you know, how to get the back door? I, I don't know how someone could figure it out unless they're measuring it, but it is a fact. I'm gonna yes. have to. I'm gonna have to look that one up. I'm, I'm, I'm taking word for it, but it's. Yeah, he said he raised his testosterone by tanning the uh, the backside. The body is an amazing thing. It's Human incredible. beings are amazing creatures. Like again, it blows my mind that you can cut your skin and the body says, like the body knows that you cut it first of all. Yeah, and then it sends platelets mm-hmm. to solve the problem. 
yep. automatically without you thinking of anything. It just happens. Like Please. that's just crazy to me. And then like you can see, you can hear, you can taste. That shit's crazy to me. Yep. And then when you look at your finger and you can move it just if you want to, like that shit's crazy. Like what what is happening 37 there? 37 trillion cells in your body. Every day you replace about 300 billion cells in your body. Turn over 300 billion cells. So in 100 days from now, you will literally be a completely different human being. At a cellular level, none of the cells in your body now will be with you then. So they'll all turn over. So that's why I tell people, if, if you get this um, genetic test, for example, and you look at these five biomarkers, these five um, methylation markers, um, and you find out exactly what your body is processing and what it's not, you're on your way to a level of optimal health that you never thought possible. But when you say 30 breath works. 30 round, three rounds of 30 breaths. Do you breathing. get lightheaded? You will get lightheaded. I don't get lightheaded anymore because I've been doing it for so long. And I've actually increased my breath hold now to four minutes. Um, you'll breath have, hold? Yeah. So I can exhale on my 30th breath and hold my breath for four minutes. And then I take a deep breath in. I hold for about a minute. And then I start over again. Where, now, where do we learn this technique? Um, so Wim Hof is the greatest teacher, but you can also go to my um, uh, Instagram at Gary Brecka, G A R Y. B R E C K A. And all I really try to do is teach on Instagram. Um, so you can go there and I have a, um, um, on my, on my Instagram, I have a explanation of how to do the breath work. And so what we're doing is, um, see people can start that tomorrow. Do you think you start it tomorrow? Like start walking on the earth tomorrow. Like I'm telling you what to do for zero. If I had no money, I would wake up every day. I'd walk on the earth. I'd breathe. I'd do a 45 minute walk outside and take a nice cold shower. Add zero to your budget and change the entire trajectory of your now, life. And that doesn't include pavement. Um, it doesn't include pavement, but if you have no other choice, it's better, better to do that. Now, look, if you live in New York, you need to spring the five grand for a PMF mat. And you need to blow the EMF frequency, the 5G, the microwave out of your body. If you want to see how much EMF you're getting right now, you can go to a website called antennasearch.com. Antenna, A-N-T-E-N-N-A-E. Well, that's antenna. Uh, antenna. A N T E N N A search.com. Um, I said I was smart. I didn't say I could spell. So, antenna search.com, put in your zip code. It will tell you exactly how many cell towers you have within a radius that's close enough to interfere with your cellular energy, usually 5G towers. The, the shoe has not dropped on 5G yet. You wait till the shoe drops on 5G because human beings are a giant ball of frequency. So this P, these PMF mats will fix that. The PMF mats will blow that frequency right out of your body. Every day. Every you, day. Do you lay it on every day? I put it under my mattress in my, not under my mattress, on top of my mattress under the, under the pad. And it's set to go off in the morning. It gets both my, my wife and I because it's right down the center of our bed. So it puts a, a wave out about six feet in either direction. Um, so you will wake up alkaline every morning of your life. I'm a huge believer in that. If you don't want to spring for the five grand, then get outside and get in contact with the earth. If you can't, don't want to spring for the hypermax, then then learn to do three rounds of 30 breaths. Your diaphragm will massage What's your intestines. You'll raise your emotional state. You'll raise your mood. You'll flood the blood with oxygen. That lightheaded feeling is the change of oxygen tension in your tissues. You should feel lightheaded. Your lips might go numb. Your fingers and toes would tingle. Those so, are all great signs. And so all you do is breathe in 30 times. 30 times. So you, you want to pretend like you have a string attached to your belly button and you're trying to pull your belly button out to the opposite wall. So you throw your belly button out um, and then suck the, the air into the apex of your lungs. You want to fill the lobes and then the apex. So belly out and then your chest up, right? And you're filling the lungs with oxygen. You're using the diaphragm to massage the intestines. You're elevating your mood. You're elevating your emotional state. I mean, if you actually look at the cascade of neurotransmitters evolved in emotion, you'd find that elevated emotional states require oxygen. Diminished emotional states do not. So anger, despair, jealousy, resentment, these emotional states require no oxygen, right? This is why no human being has ever woken up laughing. No human will ever wake up laughing. Why? Because you don't have the oxidative state to experience laughter. But can you wake up angry? Of course you can. Pinch your spouse tonight while they're dead asleep. Give it a shot. They will, you know, instantly wake up. What the heck are you doing? You know, you can wake up angry because anger does not require oxygen. The, the emotional state of anger does not require oxygen as a component of its structure. The emotional state of passion does. 
So you want to feel passion or you want to feel anger? You know, do you ever wonder why people can't sustain elevated emotional states and they spend a lifetime looking at, you know, self-help and motivational and waking up in gratitude and prayer and meditation and, and seminars and they're doing all the right things, but they just can't maintain an elevated emotional state. Their physiology is dragging them back down into the state where they most comfortably exist. If we would raise our physiologic state by breathing, we would exist in a higher vibration. What's it's simple the- and it's free. What's the superhuman component? So the superhuman component is magnetism, oxygen, and light. That's what we get from Mother Nature. We get magnetism from the earth, we get oxygen from the um, air, and we get light from the sun. If I could take all the beneficial rays from the sun, delete the UVA and UVB harmful rays, and put them in a light bed, that's what you would have in the superhuman protocol. Yeah, so the, so the PMF mat takes care of the grounding, yeah, but, so the, but the breath work, what takes care of the breath work? The um, breath work takes care of the what we call the, the second part of superhuman, which is the hypermax oxygen. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, and then exposure to sunlight. So, but, if you, but if you can't afford the superhuman protocols, you don't have to do the breath work. If you can afford the superhuman protocol, you don't need to do the breath work because you're going to put an oxygen mask on and you're going to breathe 95% O2 under mild exercise for 10 minutes every day. So you're going to wake up alkaline. You're going to walk down the hall. You're going to put an oxygen mask on and an oxygen concentrator is going to take 21% O2 from the ambient air and it's going to fill a bag full of 95% O2. You're going to put an oxygen mask on. You're going to walk on a treadmill. Or you're going to cycle on a bike for 10 minutes. That's it. Exercise with oxygen therapy, EWAT, the only two-time tel- two Nobel laureate prize winner in, in the world, two Nobel prizes in medicine, Dr. Otto Warburg yeah. won both Nobel, Nobel prizes for his work in exercise with oxygen therapy. He was able to cure, and I'm using his words, cure the top 200 diseases um, in the world at the time by using oxygen and raising people's heart rates. And uh, a lot of his research was actually acquired and then retired, actually taken out of the public domain. Of course. So, um, so kind of no makes you want to be a conspiracy it. theorist. <laughs> Well, dude, I mean, the conspiracies are turning out to be true. You you, you heard uh, the government has now confirmed that the CIA, I think, w- or the government, let's just say, was involved in JFK's assassination. Hmm. Wow. Strange. Did you know that? The next thing you know, we're going to find out they were involved in Princess Diana. And but I just don't right understand. Like, 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 <laughs> like, if that's been confirmed, why is nobody saying anything? Just why if Kowagian or Co- Co- whatever the hell you said carrageen carrageen <laughs> why if we know that that's a sewage cancer causing nonsense garbage why is any amount allowed in our food i agree and then again when you why take, are we have why are we allowed to take non-toxic compounds turn them toxic before we sell them to the public dude what about um take a seed press the oil turn it toxic feed it to the public why are we allowed to do that a, a friend of mine and my wife and his wife went to Italy and his wife was, uh, she couldn't eat cheese. What's that called? Um, lactose. Yeah. Lactose intolerant. Mm-hmm. She couldn't eat cheese. She couldn't eat this. She couldn't eat ice cream. She, I mean, she was heavy duty lactose mm-hmm. intolerant. Well, she was starting to eat the ice cream there and she was starting to eat the cheese there and mm-hmm. everything was fine. And she could not believe that she was able to eat this yeah. stuff. Same with thing. Same thing with bread. I actually just got back from a six, uh, country tour in, in, in Europe. We did uh, London, Paris, Stad, Switzerland, Munich, and Germany, and uh, Munich and um, uh, Poland. And, you know, I don't ever eat bread. I mean, that's just, I don't eat white flour, white rice, white pasta, or white potatoes. And, and, um, that's all you eat? I don't eat any of those. You don't eat white rice? I don't eat white rice or white flour. Why not? Or white bread or, or white, white rice pasta is bad. or white potatoes. I just don't eat the very high glycemic carbs. Um, white rice is actually better for you than brown rice. And if you get the organic version, it can be great for you. It just doesn't have a lot of nutrition in it. It's a filler. I'd rather eat cauliflower rice and with grass-fed butter. Um, but because uh, um, you're just getting calories and no, no nutrition. But the, the point is, to your point, I, I was able to eat, you know, uh, French baguettes. Um, and I had zero problem with digestion because there's no seed oils and there's no folic acid, right? And then, you know, you walk by a, uh, a bakery or, or, or a sandwich shop and, you know, there's sandwiches in the window one day and the next day they're half price because it's day old bread because they know at the end of that day, they have to throw it out. So they made it on Monday, Tuesday, it's 50% off and Tuesday night it's gone. You can take a loaf of bread out of a supermarket in, in America and lay the bread on the counter for 15 days and still eat it because of the processed seed oils and preservatives and the folic acid that's in there. And that's the stuff that's killing us. Is right? that, is that just all profiteering? It's all profiteering. I mean, it's, it's, it's all profiteering. And you know, when we first discovered preservatives, they were actually called the anti-digestives. 
when they first discovered a preservative and started spraying it on apples and things, they were like, hey, it prevents the digestion of the apple. It presents what's called benzoquinone, the oxidation process, um, of what makes an apple brown. And But they realized, you know, some smart marketing person said, hey, we can't call this an anti-digestive. Nobody's going to go to the anti-digestive section of the supermarket and buy fruits. So let's call it a preservative, right? The same way that we don't say sprayed with folic acid, we call it fortified or enriched, right? So 44% of kids have the gene mutation you were talking about. They can't process folic acid. And what do we give kids before they go off to school in the morning? We fill them up with folic acid. Folic acid is like cocaine for a six-year-old with that gene mutation. It makes their mind race. And when they, and when they can't process it, what happens? It's a full contact sport to get them in the car to go to school. They get to school and the teacher calls home and says, hey, Johnny can't pay attention. He's disruptive. He doesn't follow directions. And we need to bring in the Ritalin to solve this issue because they believe that if the mind is racing, you should put an amphetamine into the bloodstream to race the, the central nervous system to match the pace of the mind. But we created this situation. We created it by overstimulating the mind with a folic acid that the kid can't break down. You strip the folic acid out of their diets, the Pop-Tarts, the white uh, flour, white rice, white bread, white pasta, everything, everything they're eating. It goes right back to normal. So my kids, they probably have the motherfucker gene or they do. Mm-hmm. And well, dad's a motherfucker. And every morning they're eating that same shit. So how, so, so will that try, will that stuff you're going to send You will me? notice an entirely different child in the home. If you get the folic acid out of their diet, I'm not kidding you. Well, but how get everything that's fortified or enriched out of their diet. Stop so they're going to be eating flour. carrots for mm-hmm. breakfast. No, they can. There's a there's a great cereal called Magic Spoon, one of my favorites. It has as much protein as a dozen eggs. What if they're um, like, I don't really like it? You just be then, forceful. Well, then have yeah, you know, yeah. I mean, violence works now. <laughs> no, but I mean, we 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 tend to like cave in because we don't want to hear the yang yang. So yang, you yang. get a Magic Spoon. You you um um you you can feed them actual eggs, um you know eggs, avocado, um nuts, coconut, not or cereal. Olive oil. Not pop tarts. Just not, just not pop tarts. But what if you, what bagels. if you're taking that tri methylene, demethylene, whatever yeah, you call the, it? Um, what do you call um, it? Um, five methyl folate. That. So that cures the deficiency that you have, but it also doesn't um, address the sensitivity to folic acid. If you have that MTHFRG mutation, which 44% of the population has, right? So 44% of the people that are listening to this have that gene mutation. You should be supplementing with methyl folate. Every pregnant woman should be supplementing with methylfolate, not folic acid, because when, they, when your OBGYN tells you to take folic acid, they are assuming your body can convert it. Well, they don't know unless they know your genetic history, but everyone can, can use 5-methylfolate. So what you want to take a woman that has um, postpartum depression and kill the postpartum depression, get her 5-methylfolate, because chances are she's taking a prenatal vitamin with 1,400% of the daily allowance of folic acid, and it's making her nuts. And a lot of times, you know, when the pregnancy ends, they stop taking the prenatal vitamins. So the symptoms go away and they blame it on the pregnancy, not on the vitamin. So I like to, um, you know, supplement those people with 5-methylfolate. But for children that have behavioral issues and ADD and ADHD and and, um, uh, poor attention span and impulse control problem, this is almost always related back to folic acid and that gene mutation. And by the way, if it's not, it will cost you virtually nothing and will not hurt your child, right? Ritalin, on the other hand, is expensive and could permanently alter the neuroplasticity of their brain. (laughs) I love that. I love the... uh, the sound effects. Well, when it comes to kids, dude, that's my like passion. Like, uh, you know, especially helpless, defenseless kids. Yeah. You know, once they're 16, 17, they're still technically kids, but like, you know, they're, they're, they're grown up a little bit. I feel bad for the little ones that are literally defenseless, helpless. They'll eat what you, they, they'll eat what you provide and you're providing garbage. Right. You know, you're providing diabetes, you're providing the shit. And yeah. if you don't know, that's, you know, it's understandable. But once you do know, then it's inexcusable. I agree with you. Um, I mean, look, as, as kids as young as at the age where they can chew and swallow can supplement with methylated vitamins. Yeah. And by the um, way, folks, if you guys uh, are paying attention, you go to 10 xhealthtestcom to get tested. Yes. And it's a simple thing. I've done it. Um, Do the test it, once it, in yeah, your it's life. It's easy breezy, like, but it is six hundred dollars. It's six hundred bucks. And You'll again, folks, if you guys life. think six hundred dollars, you have a bigger issue, right? If if you think six hundred dollars is too expensive to figure out this type of thing, dude, six hundred dollars divided into your entire life, it's it's nothing. Yeah, you'll never repeat that test with your genes. Meanwhile, you know? they'll go buy dinner a bunch of times. They'll they'll you know dry clean prematurely. Do you guys dry clean uh, without needing to? 
Um, I, can like, I, can like I literally will take off because uh, I like to try on shit. I, I look at it and uh, no, not right, not right. So I'll put on four or five outfits. I'll put them on the floor. I'll come home. They're gone. I have a magic floor. Ah. Did I tell you that? <laughs> so it's cool. I can throw right. shit on the floor and it just puts gets put back where it goes. It's the most amazing thing. But yeah. it goes to the dry cleaners first. So literally, I've got like dry cleaning where I'm like, that wasn't oh that wasn't God. dirty. Wow. Yeah, I didn't even wear that. I tried that on. But they're like, well, then don't leave it on the floor. Mm. But do you guys do that? I don't do you, that. You could, you could blow that in dry cleaning is all I'm saying. You could, yeah, you, you, could. Could, you could blow it in dry cleaning, folks. Yeah, you could easily do that. Um, and then, you know, there are lots of good supplement manufacturers out there, not just myself. I mean, I spent two years flying around um, the country, literally licensing every individual ingredient that I put into a supplement, but to, for the sake of not saying you know, um, sounding like I'm here to send, sell you a supplement, thorn, pure encapsulations. There are pharmaceutical grade thorn, thorn, T H O R N E, like a thorn in your side. Yeah. Yeah. Pure I just, I just got a bottle of that. What's that right. do for you? Well, there's, there's thorn is the brand and they make all kinds of vitamins. I'm saying they're excellent brands oh. out there other than mine. I got a bottle that says thorn. As I want, I, I want people to receive the information and not think that there's an agenda. Part, my agenda is to sell you a gene test for sure. I think every human being should do that test once in their lifetime. You're absolutely foolish not to do that because if you don't know what your body converts and what it doesn't, you are absolutely guessing with supplementation. You are purely supplementing for the sake of supplementing and no other reason. So, so you don't when, know what your body needs. Yeah, but once you take that, it tells you? It tells you exactly what you're deficient in. What so your body can convert and what it can't. Because when you say, you know, I can't convert folic acid. Well, how do you eliminate folic acid out of everything Try you to eat? trim folic acid. You can't eliminate it all, but you want to get rid of the deficiency that comes from the inability to convert folic acid into the active form, which is methylfolate, right? But that's, but that's just a supplementation I take. Yeah, it's a supplementation. Yeah, like that's easy. Anyone can do that. Yeah. and, and Like and, if you said, Brad, eliminate folic acid, uh, it's doubtful. But yeah. take this supplement. And easy. Easy. Complete nonsense that you can get it from eating a clean diet. That's absolutely not true. I mean, the last time we did a soil lineage study in the United States was 1941. We are so devoid of um, essential minerals and nutrients. We're so devoid of of key absorbable forms of, of, of vitamins and amino acids. Um, supplementation is a good idea when you know what you're deficient in. Supplementing for deficiency is excellent. Supplementing for the sake of supplementing is nonsensical. But I, would, um, I don't think that... Anyone would be able to convince me, regardless of their background, unless they brought me hard evidence that you can get the nutrients that you need to be in a state of optimal health purely from a clean diet. I don't care how clean your diet is. My blood that you saw, mm -hmm. you said was damn near miraculous. Virtually perfect, yeah. I mean, you're significantly younger biologically than you are chronologically. Now, why, what, what do you think that is? Cause dude, I was drinking, smoking, partying, <laughs> eating. See, this is generally not, not the best way to recommend things to your audience, but you know, genetics play a role. Um, but clearly you're not abusing yourself as bad as you make it out to be because liver inflammation was low. The level of liver poisons was low. Your kidney inflammation was low. Your filtration rates through the kidney were through the roof. Your, the levels of kidney poison were very low. You had a very strong immune profile, meaning like your white blood cell profile showed a very strong immune system. Um, things like PSA were very low, which are other markers of inflammation. We got my labs. Yeah. We got your labs and we got your, um, and your gene test. Oh, beauty. So, so yeah. let's, cause we promised on the last episode that, that we would come back and talk about when I'm going to die and mm -hmm. what my shit look like. <laughs> so based on those labs, talk about it. So these were done, uh, what December, uh, when October I was, when of last I was year. way less shape than I am now. Yeah. October of last year. So things look really good. You know, we, when you go through labs, um, and for the record, I'm not, a physician. I'm not licensed to practice medicine. I'm a human biologist, so I'm not giving medical advice. Um, I have a whole team of physicians that give medical advice, but I am not one of those people. But when, when you look at a lab, you start with something called the CBC, which is where you just count up the contents of the blood. How many white blood cells do you have? How many red blood cells do you have? This section of the labs is really important because it tells me a couple of things. It tells me how strong your immune system is. I can look at your white blood cell profile, right? neutrophils, lymphocytes, monocytes, something called eosinophils. We look at this profile, but then more importantly, I take a section of the labs and we look at RBCs, red blood cells and hemoglobin, because everything that you perceive about energy, 
is nothing more than oxygen in your blood. If you told me, Gary, I had a lot of energy today, physiologically what you're saying is, I had a lot of oxygen in my blood today. So if oxygen equals energy, which it does, then if I wanna raise your energy level, I need to raise your blood oxygen level. And the way that we do that is improve red blood cell count in hemoglobin. Like think of a red blood cell as a tennis ball and hemoglobin is like a fluid inside that tennis ball. Well, it's inside that fluid that oxygen is bound. And this kind of stuff hides in plain sight on labs, right? Your red blood cell counts in the normal range, but it's really, really, really low. Your hemoglobin levels in the normal range, but it's really, really, really low. And now you're tired and you don't sleep well. See, you would think the opposite. You would think that people that are really exhausted would sleep the best, right? But it's, the opposite is true. People that are the most exhausted sleep the worst because it's related to the same thing, low levels of blood oxygen. So how do you increase your, your red blood cells? So you balance your hormones, right? Because in men and women, the hormone testosterone, its primary role is not male characteristics. It's not facial hair, regression, big muscles. In men and women, the primary role of testosterone is to put pressure on the bone marrow to create new red blood cells. It's called erythropoiesis. So if you are deficient in testosterone, you are very likely deficient in red blood cells and hemoglobin. So by moving testosterone into the normal range, into the optimal range, you can elevate red blood cells and hemoglobin. And by the way, the way to do that is not always with hormone therapy. I would say 40 to 50% of our patients that qualify for hormone therapy are not on hormones, right? They're on raw materials. I mean, this is what I've dedicated the balance of my adult lifetime to, is the study of the human body and the physiology behind what happens when you take certain raw materials out of the human body. Will you get what appears to be pathology and disease? Like, for example, the hormone testosterone is made from something called DHEA. DHEA is made from something called vitamin D3. So if I pull vitamin D3 and DHEA out of the body, I can collapse my hormone level and I don't have any problem with hormones, right? In order to raise it, I just put those raw materials back into the human body, vitamin D3, DHEA, and very often you see hormone levels like testosterone rise back to the normal range. By the way, vitamin D3 is, is what I take a lot. Good. And yeah, you were 123 on your labs, if you don't mind me. Yeah, is that good? That. Uh, that's very good. I don't have an issue with it being over. The range is from 30 to 100. Most people are below 30. Um, most people are clinically deficient in vitamin D3. That's why COVID hit um, those people hard. Yeah, that's why COVID disproportionately affected minorities. It wasn't had nothing to, to do with their minority status. It had to do with the pigment of their skin. Do you think right? whoever created that did that on purpose? Oh, um, now we're getting freaking no, banned. No, actually, I mean, if you think about it, they're just, they, the, the immune system suffers when you deplete vitamin D3. Right? But it everyone the, should be on D3. Everyone should be on now, D3. Now, do you need a K2 you should vehicle. take it with vitamin K2. 5,000 IUs of D3 with about 80 micrograms of K2. Remember, D3, amongst other things, is a calcium transport molecule. So I want the calcium to go into the bone, not into the arterial wall. So vitamin K2 will make sure that that calcium makes its way into the bone and not into the arterial wall. Yeah, so don't just go out and get D3, folks. Get D3 with K2. They sell it with K2, too. Yes. That's mm -hmm. the one I take. They sell it with K2. Minimum 5,000 I use. 1,000 I use or 2,000 I 2, use. 10, a day. Yeah, most people should be on 10,000, but that's what you want to get blood work done for. That's yeah, so, what we put you on. So, so it, it, you know, obviously people are listening. What if they feel good? They Everything's fine, but could there still be looming trouble in their blood? Well, when you say people feel good, that's, that's their perception, right? I mean, most people have, have accepted such an erosion of their baseline sense of normalcy. They've accepted a baseline sense of normalcy that is so far below their optimal level that they have not even realized it. You know, a lot of times after we see patients, they'll, they'll call me go, Oh my God, Gary, I feel amazing. And I always say, well, you don't really feel amazing. You, you just feel normal. That's what normal is supposed to feel like. You just forgotten how good normal feels. So if you're sleeping decently and, and you know, you're pretty happy with your physique and you know, your libido is decent and you don't feel like you have brain fog and you got a healthy response to exercise and you know, decent waking energy, you don't feel like your cognitive function is suffering. You could still be 60% of where your optimal state is. Mm. Look, if you look at Grant Cardone, for example, it was um, before I started treating him. If you go back on his Instagram four years, he looked 15 years older four years ago than he does today. 
because now his blood works dialed in perfectly. He doesn't have any nutrients, nutrient deficiencies in his blood. Most people are running around just kind of supplementing for the sake of supplementing. I'm not a big believer in just supplementing for sake of supplementing. Do you sell those big oxygen tank things? We do. That's a game changer. See, because if oxygen makes it and you breathe in oxygen while you're working out. Oh, the presence of oxygen is the absence of disease. How, how do I get one of those oxygen things? I'll send you a link to get one. It's called the Hypermax O2 system. It's called exercise with oxygen therapy. So first you lay on a PEMF mat, pulse electromagnetic field. Looks like a yoga mat, right? You lay on this mat and it runs low gauss current through the body, about the same current as the surface of the earth. And what this will do is it'll alkalize all 32 trillion cells in the human body in about 16 minutes. I put mine right in my bed and I set a timer on it so it actually goes off while I'm sleeping. You don't even notice it. So when you wake up, all that EMF frequency is blown out of your body, right? You're, right now you've got 5G EMF, dirty EMF frequency. And by the way, the shoe has not dropped on 5G frequency yet. Stay tuned because that shoe is going to drop pretty hard. Um, when we When we start analyzing the impact on, on cellular function. So having a PEMF mat will not only blow these frequencies out of your body, but it will alkalize all 32 trillion cells in the body. And, and disease cannot exist in alkaline states. Disease does not thrive in an alkaline environment. All, all cancer has two common characteristics. One, it's DNA replication run amok. All cancer is aberrant DNA replication. And all cancer begins in a hypoxic environment. On like oxygen. oxygen. To- oxygen deprived environment. In fact, the, you know, when, when I went back and talked about my career as a mortality expert, um, you know, people said, well, how did you predict so accurately when people were going to die? I said, well, first we predicted the onset of disease and then we would predict the severity of disease. And the way that we predicted both the onset and the severity of disease was by looking at how well or how poorly your, your body managed oxygen, because think about it. Every human being leaves this earth the same way. We all die of exactly the same thing. Everyone dies of hypoxia. The definition of death is lack of oxygen to the brain. Now, it might be a gunshot wound, a bus, a heart attack, a stroke. Um, you know, there's lots of reasons why that could happen. But when you can no longer sustain enough oxygen to the brain, that's a definition of death. But we tend to think of them as an event, right? Like something that happens to us. But that's not true. We're all on a hypoxic curve, a predictable curve. You are either managing oxygen very poorly, in which case you're accelerating towards the grave, or you're managing oxygen very well, in which case you're moving very slowly towards the grave. And so the the less steep we can make that curve, the further we push out the onset of pathology of disease, the less severe all pathologies and disease come. So how do I look in that regard? Your oxygen transport's excellent here. (laughs) And I'm not being paid to say that. I mean, your red blood cell counts in a great range. Um, You could probably, you know, use a little blood dump. A little Um, what? Blood dump. Yeah, uh, that's what, that that was a year ago. Yeah, this was before you had your blood. Yeah, uh, we dumped it when you were here. Yeah, if you look at the incidence. How often should someone blood dump? Two to three times a year after Damn, so testing I'm, I'm i'm two Probably three do. behind then turning your blood over is one of the healthiest things you can do because i didn't do it since you left ah how See, do you blood dump you just you do an iv you run 500 ml of fluid in you can take the iv off the pole and put it below the level of the heart yeah, but who pull does the same that amount like, of fluid out i ain't doing it our myself nurses, our doctors. Are you out of your mind? or you can go to the red cross and donate a pint of blood that's it yeah just go, just go donate. Unless your blood's too thick, then they won't take it. Then we have to write you a script for something called therapeutic phlebotomy, which you actually donate the blood and then they toss it because it's too thick. Because remember, remember what we said about testosterone. Its primary role is to put pressure on the bone marrow to create new red blood cells. Well, now the blood can thicken with red blood cells, right? So we have to get some of those out. If you look at the incidence of cardiovascular disease between men and women, you'll see that men lead women by a huge margin until women stop menstruating. Right after they stop menstruating, there's a parabolic spike in the incidence of cardiovascular disease and women approximate men in the incidence of cardiovascular disease because they're not turning the blood over anymore. They're not bloodletting. They're not bloodletting. So it's very healthy for you to bloodlet. Hmm. Um, but in any case, interesting. back to the PEMF mat. You lay on this PEMF mat and you get alkaline. See, it's a total fallacy that you can make your blood alkaline by drinking alkaline water. It's like the biggest marketing myth to ever take, take hold and storm the planet. Um, you can drink alkaline water and not become more acidic, 
but it will not make you more alkaline. You cannot have the properties that make a um, cup of water alkaline transfer to a cup of blood and have them also maintain their properties. In other words, if this is salt water and this is water without salt, if I transfer the salt from this glass to this glass, it can't also be here. Can't be in two places at one time. So alkalinity is a charge, right? pH stands for potential hydrogen. So if I actually want to make myself more alkaline, I have to expose the body to a charge. That's why earthing and grounding is so good for us. You know, think about the last time that you walked barefoot on the surface of the earth, like bare feet touching bare sand or soil or dirt, not pavement, but grass, soil. You will discharge into the earth. You'll actually change the pH of your body, your tissues, by walking barefoot on the earth or laying on a PMF mat. And that's scientifically proven or a bunch of hippie shit? Oh, no, that's, you can use an EMF meter and, and test it in real time. See, in isn't fact, that weird, though? Doesn't that show you that, that there's got to be a, a, a higher power? Who, who would have known that the earth itself decharges the humans walking on it? Yeah. As long as you're not wearing the shoes. Oh, and earthing, all grounding. All the shit that the men, like, people made. Yeah. But, like, nature in and of itself is amazing. It's amazing. We get three things from Mother Nature. We get magnetism, oxygen, and light. And those three things are so important to human function. The magnetism from the earth keeps us alkaline. It grounds us. When we're alkaline, the red blood cells in your bloodstream separate. They start floating away from each other. See, so remember, if you have, if two cells have the same charge, then they can't touch, right? They repel, right? And that's what you want because you want all that surface area exposed to the blood to bring nutrients in. But once they have opposite charges, they're attracted and they start to stick together and clump up like too many cars trying to take the same exit. Well, if I can make you alkaline in the morning, first thing in the morning, by eight to 16 minutes on a PMF mat, then all your red blood cells separate. And then you use that hypermax oxygen system. You put that oxygen mask on. It's 95% O2. And while you mildly exercise, you breathe 95% O2 into an alkaline system with all of these red blood cells free floating around. When you power up the mitochondria like that, it is unbelievable how good you feel. Your mood, your emotional state. Because human beings aren't powered by the food that we eat or the, or the supplements that we take. We're not powered by amino acids or proteins or carbohydrates or minerals or fats or any of those compounds we put in the body. We're powered by something called ATP, right? So eventually all of those nutrients get into the cell. They go into a part of the cell called the mitochondria and the mitochondria turns it into ATP. 10% of your body weight is mitochondria. Have you heard of NAD? Mm-hmm. Nicotinamide that, that adenine dinucleotide. What's that? Is that good to get? Um, NAD is excellent for you, but you can only do NAD um, either intravenously or via injection. But orally, you can take a precursor called nicotinamide riboside or nicotinic acid, right? These are B vitamins so that your body can make NAD, right? You actually can't take an NAD plus capsule. Yeah, but you can get an IV. because You can get an NAD IV. When, when my wife mm -hmm. and I got the vid, I did the monoclonals and everything and i've and the whole bit and it was gone like this by the way but my wife got nad well i was going to do the same thing but she said after she got it, it she had more and my wife like has some issues like mm -hmm. she's always chronically something <laughs> but energy rise yeah but she said man she she was like her energy's never oh. been higher never been better after yes. that nad the reason i didn't do it is because when she was getting it they said your chest can hurt, and she was like, it looked, just running it, it looked like she was freaking dying. And I'm no. like, does that hurt? She said it hurt. They're running it. it way too fast. They just need to slow the IV drip down. If you give something called trimethylglycine, TMG, which is just a liquid, liquid amino acid, TMG, if you give trimethylglycine and run that IV slow, she'll have none of those symptoms. If you run the IV too fast, you're oversaturating those receptors. Yeah, right? you, gotta, they, you gotta allow the body to absorb it. Well, to me, I listen to my body. That's one of my long time rules. People made fun of me. Now they're wearing braces and freaking they got injuries and they mm -hmm. and they're and they're they're crippled basically. Yeah. I feel great. I can run and walk and mm -hmm. I have no hip problem, no joint problem, no joint pain. I have no problems. Mm -hmm. But that's because I listen to my body. If I was at the gym hitting it mm -hmm. and and the next day I feel like it's so sore it hurts. Mm-hmm. 
that's to me, I may be wrong, but that's my body saying, don't do that shit. Oh yeah. Joint pain. You want to listen to joint pain. Muscle soreness is, is great for you. Joint I, pain but, is yeah, terrible like for you. muscle soreness. Yeah. Like muscle soreness. It, especially when you get massages, when you're a little bit sore, they're <laughs> yeah. the best, dude. Uh-huh. but I'm talking about like pain. Like dude, my elbow shouldn't be feeling painful as I'm, no. as I'm lifting a weight. Yeah. No, those are, those are your muscle origin insertions in the joints. I mean, that's where we get actual pain. Rarely does a muscle create a lot of pain, right? The belly of a muscle. So I'd I'd put the weight down and not work out for a a week. People say, pussy, power through it. Well, guess what? Now they're wearing braces. Oh yeah. No question. And and, and those compression bandages. I'm I'm a hundred percent great. So when the NADA hurt, I thought I ain't doing it. Why? Because if it hurts, that's your body saying, don't do this. Yeah, no, just slow the dosage down. NAD drips well, why can take they know 60 to, do to that? 90 minutes. Well, they, sh- they should have known to do that. I mean, if you're responsibly running NAD on a patient, you should know that the drip rate is important. Another, dosage and drip rate are very important. Another plug for 10X Health System. Mm-hmm. 10th, 10xhealthsystem.com. Because uh, uh, someone can go to that and get dialed in on more shit than we're talking about. Oh, they can go to 10xhealthsystem.com. I mean, they could be a franchise partner of ours. They could, um, of Grant's and, and mine and Brandon's. Um, they could open, get open blood work done. They could open a 10x health clinic. And we'll help them. How with many their, have you opened now? We took 390 applications and i think we've approved 58 so far that was just since april and they're popping up all over and they're popping up all over aventura yeah. naples you know uh california la they're going to be big one of these days because it's basically true anti-aging it really is and longevity because you know coming from the coming from the mortality space you know, I borrowed a lot of that knowledge from the mortality space i mean if you understand what makes people die then you conversely understand what makes people live and the sad thing about my previous career was i I wasn't allowed to have any contact with the patient or any contact with the treating physician partially because i'm not licensed to practice medicine but also because they don't want someone from an insurance company getting involved in the medical care of the patient but the sad thing is even if we saw life-threatening drug interactions we couldn't have any communication with the patient so it was terrible i mean i felt like i was just sitting behind a thick glass wall, just watching blind people walk into traffic. Mm. And, um, you know, eventually I, I realized there was human beings on the other side of those spreadsheets. And that's what made me make a conscious decision to leave that career and kind of touch the face of humanity by getting into the wellness space. Um, and then Grant Cardone uh, and Brandon Dawson bought us last September. I don't think the last time I was here, I don't think Grant had acquired us yet. I don't remember. Maybe. If it was before September. In any case, um, whatever, whatever, whatever it happened, you know, Grant doesn't buy stupid shit. So <laughs> no, he, he definitely he doesn't saw an opportunity. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, so he bought dude, us with, he's got a business genius on board named Brandon Dawson. And that guy can, Brandon Dawson knows how to smart scale son of a business. Bitch. He is a smart son of a gun for sure. Are, and I'm sure they're all in the oxygen bags. Oh, and they're all dialed the mats. in. <laughs> Grant uses his red light bed and his oxygen and his PMF every single day. Yeah. Every single day. He well, hates to I travel when he's away from it. Dialed in with the, some of that. All right. And if I'll anybody's give listening wants dialed in, get a hold of Gary at Gary Brecka, by the way. Very simple. G A R Y. Yeah. Hey, you want to spend an hour a week with me helping you become a business badass? Well, check out my group in the link below. I would say almost famous for being able to look at people's blood work and tell tell them within a month of when they were going to die. And just to clarify that, because I get a lot of flack on, uh, on social media for that. It wasn't, there, I, there is no blood test or gene test that we do that tells you when you're going to die. Um, and you won't find any videos, any podcasts, any anything on Instagram, any statement I've ever made where I said, hey, I can look at a blood test and a gene test and tell you how many more months you have to live. We need five years of medical records and five years of demographic data. That was my previous career. And in my previous career working for the insurance company, we would take five to 10 years of medical records and five to 10 years of demographic data. And with that information, we could zero in on, um, within a month on your predicted date of death with a very high degree of certainty. That's how the insurance companies determine whether they're going to insure you. That's exactly right. I mean, and people say that's uh, that's complete nonsense. If you could do that, you would have won a Nobel Prize. Well, I didn't invent the science. I certainly was not the brains behind the mortality um, probabilistic modeling system. But if you want to know how accurate it is, 
you know, the largest population database in the world is held by the insurance companies. So life insurance is the polar opposite of Google and Facebook. They collect voluminous amounts of information on you, but they don't share it back with anyone. And what they have that no other medical institution has is they know the day, the date, the time, the location, and the cause of death for every single person that they've insured. You need to provide them that information to get a death claim. See, a medical study, a clinical study, a, a, a practitioner, a doctor, a physician, a, a university doesn't have any of that information. If I'm a cardiologist and you come in to see me and I put a stint in your heart and then you leave my office... I don't know if you died two years later, 10 years later, 20 years later. I don't know if you died of a complication related to that stint or if you died of cancer or if you just died of old age. Yeah. Insurance companies know precisely what you died of. They know exactly what medications you're taking. They know precisely what your blood work looked like when they took out the life insurance policy. And very often they have gene information on you. And they actually go from the day, date, time, location, and cause of death. And they triangulate that back to what... Um, precipitated that. And yes, you can predict mortality to the month. Now, does that mean that you're predicting whether or not a plane falls out of the sky or they get there, you know, they get, uh, you know, assaulted and die of a, you know, an act of violence or they fall off the curb and bump their head? No, it doesn't mean that it works all the time in every person. What it means is what is the statistically most likely point at which this person will pass? to the month perish expire perish, expire now again without extenuating circumstances without a plane crash or a bus or a car or a gunshot wound but given the current state of affairs meaning what does their blood work look like what are their comorbidities what are their morbidity factors what are their lifestyle choices um and um you know what is their demographic data how many more months does this person have left on earth and if you want to know how accurate that science is when i did i practice that form of, of probabilistic modeling prediction for almost 22 years. If you want to know how accurate that science is, just look at the life insurance companies. You know, when, when in 2008, 2009, when the financial services collapse happened, we lost 364 banks. We did not lose a single life insurance company, not one. There has not ever been an incidence where a valid life insurance claim has failed to have been paid in, in America, not once. So why are they so solvent? because they bet on one variable, right? When you're, when you're a hedge fund or um, an investment group or you're an angel investor and you're gonna invest money in a company, nobody makes an investment of any consequence on a single variable. Well, I'm betting that this CEO will remain at the company for, for a lifetime. I will bet that they will never lose this one customer. You don't bet on a single variable. A life insurance company takes risk on one variable. Only one thing matters. When is this person going to die? How many more months or years of premium collection am I going to have before I actually pay out that death claim? And if you don't think that that's valid science, then you know very, very little about life insurance. They are some of the most solvent institutions on the planet. None of them failed in the financial services crisis. If you look at the collapse of AIG, the only division that held that company afloat was the insurance division, right? It wasn't the financial services side, it was the insurance side. So they're extraordinarily accurate. If a life insurance company refuses to put life insurance on your life, sometimes they won't give you a reason. There's a rationale for that. We knew about the opioid crisis 10 years before they were talking about addictive amyloids. By the way, if anyone needs life insurance, go ahead and hit me in the DM. Just put life insurance. I'll have one of my agents reach out to you. Awesome. And what you're going to see right now, if you want to see, um, and I'm not making a, I'm not taking a position on the vaccine one way or the other, but if you watch life insurance trends, what you're going to find is if you were vaccinated, you can get preferred, not super preferred coverage. If you were vaccinated and double boosted, you may be able to get standard coverage. You will not get preferred. If you're vaccinated and triple boosted, you won't be able to get standard coverage. You'll be table rated. If you're quadruple boosted, you will not be able to get life insurance. <laughs> Dude, that's serious. Yeah. But how, so how do you justify continuing to push? I just saw a commercial the other day. We should get our babies, our infants vaccinated now. That's what they're saying. And they're not even at risk, but yet we're supposed to go get them vaccinated from a vaccination that is going to cause you not to be insurable. Possibly. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it is happening now. Um, and well, have you because seen, again, have you seen that video called died suddenly? 
Yes. I mean, that's horrifying. But, you know, I, I you also have to be careful not to jump to conclusions and say, OK, well, you know, every reporter that, you know, dies behind the camera or a professional athlete that drops on the field is not necessarily linked to the vaccine. But when you also start to look at we used to study population mortality, you know, 1500 and change cardiac related deaths in 14 months following the inception of the vaccine that related to myocarditis in young men, there were the same number of deaths in professional sports in the previous 52 years. Um, that's statistically significant, you know, but when you, when you talk about children, especially, oh my gosh, infants, six months to five years old, you, you ask, get to ask yourself, why would I give this infant a, a vaccine? You know, what, what am I vaccinating against? What, what is the risk that I'm trying to mitigate? Because I'm not, um, I'm a believer in real vaccines that prevent infection, that prevent spread. But um, when you say, what's the risk that you're mitigating against? Well, there is a statistically insignificant risk of both mortality and severe illness in, in infants and children, especially sub five years old. So there is no statistical reason to vaccinate them. You know, there's a statistically insignificant risk that they will die in a car accident on the way to school, but we still take them to school. You know, there's a statistically insignificant risk that, you know, they could get food poisoning and have a life-threatening reaction. They could have an anaphylactic shock from a bee sting. So there are all kinds of risks in their life. What we do is we try to find the statistically valid risks that impose real threat and we vaccinate or, you know, try to protect against those risks. Um, you know, I think you have a greater risk of dying of a random bee sting not knowing that you are allergic to bees than you do of actually having um, a death in a six-month-old, a five-year-old from from. COVID. And then when you add that to the fact that none of us have long-term safety data, I can't sit here and rip the vaccine apart over the over a long period of time because I don't have safety data, but neither does Big Pharma or anyone else. Nobody's physician has long-term safety data. You know, when they waived, uh, when they started the, um, you know, the, the Operation Warp Speed, Operation Warp Speed wasn't a fast development of a vaccine. The vaccine only took about 90 minutes. You take the nucleocapsid of a virus and you, and you, you know, essentially manufacture a, a counter nuclear capsid protein, which, you know, that would create an antibody. And then you do 10 years of testing to determine whether or not that's safe. Well, you just weigh the safety trials. You didn't actually increase the speed at which we created the vaccine. You just waived all of the reasons that we use to protect the public. You know, we, we waived safety data and we called that operation warp speed. So now we just don't know. It's just one giant experiment on, on humankind. And hopefully it goes well. But we do know it's not looking well. Right now, I mean, there is a lot of anecdotal evidence that uh, looks terrible. I mean, you look at the parabolic spike in myocarditis, transverse myelitis, trigeminal neuralgias, um, strokes, and actually the form and type of, of strokes. These strokes uh, clot formations called thrombolytic thrombocytopenia, special formation in the platelets. Wait, that how, are, how do you learn all this shit? Because you're not a doctor. No, I'm not a physician. But I'm you, know, you, you know tons more than most that I've met. Um, how do you learn it all? You know, I, I found out when I was in the eighth grade uh, that I was clinically photographic and uh, a clinical level of photographic recall is different than people that have a photographic memory. Clinical photographic recall is that um, I, I remember every single thing that I read, um, which is why I can't read for pleasure. I mean, I can't be on a flight and pick up the American Airlines seat back magazine and start thumbing through it because I'll tell you six months from now, you know, where the sales office is for a hotel project in Buenos Aires, right? I'll, I'll, I'll remember the address. I used to do a trick when I would go to dinner with different couples. I'd have like six or eight people around a table. And um, at the beginning of dinner, I'd have everybody pass me their driver's license. And I'd look at their driver's license for a minute and then I'd hand it back out to everybody. And then at the end of dinner, I would tell everybody the driver's license number, their their date of birth, the expiration date, and uh, and when the license was issued. Um, that, 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 that's a cool, that's almost like a superhuman Ability. Yeah, so so I can just regurgitate voluminous amounts of information. So sometimes when people say a word to me, I just go, I snap back and I just pull forward either that clinical study or that research trial. And um, and then I, you know, I rarely espouse my own opinion. I'm usually pulling from, you know, research that I've Well, last time you were here, read. we were talking about cyanocobalamin. Oh my God, I got so much flack for that. Um, Dude, you got you got the 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 warning label stuck up and, and I think even suppressed on YouTube. They, <laughs> yeah. they, they were shutting you down and saying, this guy, don't listen to this guy. Yeah, I mean, look, uh, there's four forms of B12 in the world, right? I mean, three of them occur naturally in nature. Um, they're called hydroxycobalamin, adenosylcobalamin, and methylcobalamin. You can find them all over the surface of the earth. And then we make one in a laboratory. It's called cyanocobalamin. Um, we make it from hydrogen cyanide. And Why know, do we make it? 
um, in an effort to make less expensive synthetic vitamins. You know, we try to make folate in a laboratory and we call it folic acid. Folic acid doesn't occur anywhere naturally in nature. You can't find folic acid anywhere on the surface of the earth. So my position is that there's four forms of B12 and one of them synthetic and one of them's made from hydrogen cyanide. In fact, we should probably just go to the, I'm going to go to the, um, can we show this on the, on the podcast? If I actually yeah. pull up a white guy's well, thing? not oh. audio, but I, if you guys go to YouTube right now, this, this video will be on YouTube. Okay. So you, I can put it in the YouTube video. Okay. Let's put it in the YouTube video because I want to show where, wh why am I? And, and also uh, tell them in case, in this case, it's audio where to go look for themselves. Okay. So if you just type in the word cyanocobalamin, C Y A N O. And, and by the way, this is like in my protein drinks. It's, it's in your vitamins. It's in all it's kinds of stuff. It's in protein cereal. drinks. It's in supplements. It's, it's in, all over the place. Yeah. So you, you go to cyanocobalamin um, and uh, you C Y A N O C O B A L A M I N, cyanocobalamin. And I get, a, like I said, I got a lot of flack for this. So I'll just let everybody else decide for themselves. I'll throw the evidence out there that I read and brought me to my conclusion and uh, let them read it themselves and decide what they want to do. So you can type in cyanocobalamin, put a space and put the word pub chem and then click on that link. It's going to take you to the national library of medicine at the national Institute of health. I've already memorized this page. So I don't know why I'm looking at it, but um, you know, it'll take you to the national library of medicine at the national Institute of health. When you get there, if you want to read the component compounds, what it's made out of, you scroll down to section 5.3. It'll say component compounds. The second link there. Um, says it's made of the cobalt metal, which all B12 is. And the next one, it says it's made of hydrogen cyanide. Well, click on that. When you click on hydrogen cyanide, you'll find it's a flammable, acute toxic, environmental hazard, health hazard. That's what it's listed as. What's just plain cyanide? Um, well, hydrogen cyanide is, you know, um, cyanide is a deadly poison. The next sentence says other uses for hydrogen cyanide. We use them in chemical weapons. So we use the hydrogen cyanide that is bound to the cobalt metal in chemical weapons we list the hydrogen cyanide as an acute toxic environmental hazard health hazard and it's flammable in fact if you're using that form of b12 as it's manufactured the driver that transports that powder has to wear a hazmat suit has to have a flammable transport license has to have a hazardous waste disposal license and can't come in contact with that that vitamin Right, so just Crazy, think about that but for we, a second. But we ingest it, and then yeah, we ingest it. And then I had some some uh, internet troll that loves to troll me, some some um, half big PhD that said, uh, "Well, you know, Gary's trying to scare the world with uh, cyanocobalamin, and and uh, everyone knows that you know that you'd have to take twenty five hundred times the dosage in order to have a toxic level because the dose determines the poison, which is the most nonsensical thing I've ever heard in my life. The dosage does not determine the poison. You have a bunch of, um, you know, supposed uh, academies, academics that, that, that like to say that, but if the doshas determine the poison, nobody would have mercury poisoning, right? The USS, the US, uh, the FDA and, and, and the CDC both say that there's uh, toxic, non-toxic levels of mercury are 0 .04, uh, 0.045 micrograms. So you can ingest 0 0.045 micrograms of mercury and it's non-toxic, but nobody gets a toxicity level from a single dose of mercury. It's the cumulative dose toxicity that matters. So what if you're taking this in your protein powders and your supplements and your energy drinks and you're, and you're taking a hydrogen cyanide flammable acute toxic environmental hazard that's accumulating in your tissues? And by the way, the body can't even use cyanocobalamin. Cyanocobalamin is useless in the human body. The human body converts it to something called hydroxycobalamin. So why would you force your body to do that anyway? So if the dosage determine the poison, then I guess you're fine with Small doses of mercury, small doses of lead, small doses of arsenic, small doses of hydrogen cyanide. And that's one way to think about it. Carrageenan, a known um, carcinogen that we put as a thickening agent in a lot of our protein powders and drinks. Carrageenan, a single ounce of carrageenan is not going to cause you colon cancer, but it is highly linked to colon cancer. So do you want to keep bombarding yourself with no. micro doses of carrogen? So but it's see, so but, nonsensical but, but to say that the dosage determines the poison. That's the most false statement I've ever heard in my well, life. Well, Gary, what I want to know is how are, are these agencies that are supposedly there to protect the consumer? Because like these internet the trolls, they, they believe like these internet trolls, like some of these trolls will say the dosage determines the poison. The it FDA takes the same position. They, they, they take the position of single dose toxicity. If it's not do toxic in a single dose, let's give it to the public. Well, let me but ask you a question. cumulative dose toxicity is what we should worry about. By the way, that's what Europe uses. Yeah, and but then, let me ask you a question. Let's say I gave you a 
glass of water and I just put a little tiny fraction of shit in it. Yeah, a little mercury. Feces. Not a mercury. Turd. Shit. Yeah, shit. I put shit. a little fraction of it in there. Would you yeah. drink it? Probably not. I'd Why? rather have the shit free water. If Why? You don't it's mind. mostly all water. I know. It's a little shit hey, ain't going to hurt you. The dosage determines the poison. It's just a little bit of shit. Yeah, it's the whole. It's the whole. You know, mindset to me. It's like, dude, if these agencies are are there to protect, I would say, now what is this? Coagulin or what'd you call it? Carrageenan. Carrageenan. What is it? Oh, it's, it's a, a sludge. Agent. Yeah. Oh, it, what's it for? Oh, it's to thicken the stuff. Okay. You have nothing else that you can thicken Highly it. Highly linked to colon cancer. The numerous animal. The answer studies. would be no. You can't put that in our food. Yeah. Period. By the way, it's illegal in Europe. Eight, there are 1,800 compounds that are legal in the United States that are not legal in Europe. And all I try to do is expose some of these to say, hey, if you're making a choice, and by the way, you don't have to buy my vitamins. You don't have to take my test. You don't have to go to my website. I'm just telling you right now, if you got supplements with cyanocobalamin, throw those in the trash and get ones with methylcobalamin. I would much rather drink a... What, do you know which ones they are? Because like every time I look, there's cyanocobalamin. Yeah, in cyanocobalamin's in like Celsius and Monster, but it's not in Bang. Methylcobalamin's in Bang, so I would prefer to drink a bang if I was going to drink an energy drink. Um, really good organic protein powders. A lot of them don't use uh, folic acid and they don't use cyanocobalamin. Um, I got to get a different protein Because these are all sy synthetic now. forms. I mean, just think if, if, it's, if it's necessary for optimal health, do you think that it's probably a synthetic chemical or pharmaceutical? Do you think any of those things are actually necessary compounds for the human body if we make it in a laboratory? No. So um, my only point is, you know, most of the people that are, that are listening to me or my patients that, that, uh, that are having life changing results. You know, a lot of it is what I'm, I'm having them not do right. Getting seed oils out of their body, you know, getting seed oils out of their diet. You know, we, when you look at the back of a label and you see, okay, so this has sunflower oil and safflower oil and canola oil. And so all those things sound great. Sunflower, safflower. Yeah. Sunflower seeds. Aren't those oil? good for you? So the, the, the seed oils are terrible, man. If you actually saw how, um, something like a, uh, uh, canola oil was processed, right? I mean, when they actually first make canola oil and it was, I think canola oil and Crisco were originally meant to be machine lubricants. Um, the oil comes out very like thick and gummy. So they use something called hexane, a known neurotoxin to degum the, the, the sludge first. So now they use the neurotoxin to degum it. And once it's degummed, um, they heat it and they usually heat it to over 450 degrees, which turns the oil rancid. If you've ever actually been to a canola oil factory it is the most god awful place on earth it's just absolutely rancid fat burning and once it becomes rancid it stinks so then they have to deodorize it with sodium hydroxide a very highly known carcinogen and after it becomes carcinogenic and neurotoxic and heated till it's rancid then they bleach it so they can so the oil is clear <laughs> I'm not making this up um, I know, and then they bottle it, it and they it put it on like they bottle are. it and they put it on the shelf um, and, and, and it's allowed. Yeah. See, this is the whole point. Like, how is it allowed? Yeah. Like one of the trends that we saw and, on and life insurance. Hold on though, but why is it allowed? Um, it, It's allowed because, you know, big, big, big farm in the food industry is in the back pocket of the government. I mean, did you see the food pyramid that just came out? Joe Rogan posted? Re yes. It's mind numbing. The I couldn't even believe that was, that was real. Lucky Charms. They said Lucky Charms was better than steak. Lucky Charms was better than steak. There are 11 different food dyes before you get to the... Grain sprayed with folic acid and the sugar and the, and, 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 the, and the grains, which are terrible for you anyway. Listen, I want to make sure before we run out of time, because every episode you're on, we talk forever and say so much. And then I, when you leave, I'm like, dude, I wanted to ask all these questions. So <laughs> this time I want to talk at least a little bit about being superhuman. Oh, superhuman. Yeah. Because, because I'm interested in superhuman. But yep. you also said something about folic acid. Yes. That, that everyone was like, ah, oh, bullshit, whatever that was. Oh, that's another one. You know, I, I, I get called out for folic acid all the time, too. About 44% of the world's population has a gene mutation called MTHFR. I've got it. Yes. Um, I won't take it, tell you what the nickname and, is. And, by, and by the way, folks, if you guys want to take the test, and I highly recommend everybody take this test because it'll give you some insight that you can use to, to prevent a lot of shit. Where do they take the test? Just go to 10X, the number 10, the letter X, health test.com at 10 test.com. You order the gene test. You'll do it once in your life. It's $600. Everybody's like, why can't you make the test more affordable? It's $600. You do it once in your life. Yeah, that's pretty um, affordable. And then you don't have to buy my supplements. Um, you, you can buy somebody else's supplements, but most of us are just guessing on what we need to supplement with. We're supplementing for the sake of supplementing. We're accepting um, a degradation in our baseline sense of normalcy, you know, our, our, where we consider our normal 
baseline to be we're not sleeping well because our mind's keeping us awake. You know, we've got gut issues like you know, gas bloating, diarrhea, constipation, irritability, cramping because we we actually have slowed down the motility of the gut. We've got mood issues, you know, mild depression, anxiety, and all of these things do have links. And I will put the links to the clinical research this time below the podcast. They have links to genetic mutations. They have links to a process called methylation. Methylation is the most important process that all human beings go through. And just to note is for, to my team, make sure that these links are in the podcast before it drops. Don't let me see this without the links. I want to see the links. False information or what have you. The the, the interesting thing is the agency that flagged me for false information um, was actually the agency that I quoted the link from and had on uh, on the, on the last podcast, so I they, actually they, took it from their website and reposted it. And then they cited it as false information. I thought that was funny. really oxymoronic. <laughs> I was like, I got, got this from your website, but, um, well, people uh, are always cynical, you know, you're just trying to sell me your pills. It's like, dude, it I am trying to sell you a gene test. I think every human being on the planet should spend $600 once in their lifetime, find out what genetic mutations you have, and then never guess what supplement you need to take for the balance of your lifetime. So yes, I am here to sell you a gene test for $600. I'll throw that right out there. And, and more importantly, if you have this gene, MTFR or whatever it's called, I call it the motherfucker. Yeah, that's the nickname for it. If Methylene tetrahydrofolate. If you got reductase. the motherfucker gene, there's specific and easy things you can do to improve your life dramatically. Very simple. And I am Not starting expensive. a series of hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of patient interviews where we show before and afters, before labs and after labs, without a whole lot of money being spent. And I put the patient on there to tell their own story. So our clinical team gets the blood work and the genetic test. They write a treatment protocol, sometimes um, a diet, sometimes exercise and lifestyle changes, and very often a specific set of supplements. And then we watch the changes that happen in the blood over 10 weeks, and then we post the changes in the blood. You can't make up the changes in the blood. Well, we're going to do it with facts me. Facts of facts. So, yeah. We'll and superhuman, you know, is... um. Uh, you know, superhuman is essentially about taking everything that's good about mother nature and bringing it from the outside in. All right. And I don't expect by any stretch for people to put up 140 or 150 grand to buy the superhuman equipment and put it in their house. Um, which I'm going to do. Yeah. You're going to do it because you can afford it. I mean, I have hundreds of patients that have done that, but the, and by the way, I have people that can afford it listening. I would highly recommend these, these units as well. If you want more information, just go to 10 X health.com. Oh, I would have a PMF Matt hypermax oxygen and a red light bed before i have a sports car um but does that pff is that pmf matt the one you lay on like right, yes, right before you go to sleep? electromagnetic field it runs up. low gauss current through the body right now um, you know if you want to change the charge in the body um you know ph is a charge right and we know that as we get slightly more alkaline it's it's very beneficial for us so we go from acidic to alkaline so if you want to change the ph in the blood it's a complete fallacy that you can do that by drinking alkaline water right in 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 molecular chemistry something can't donate its properties and also maintain them so if you want to actually um change the charge in the body you run low gauss current through the body the same current that you would get if you put bare feet on the surface of the earth um and that's why i say so there's a hundred and fifty thousand dollar solution buy all this fancy equipment put it in your house or or go to one of our centers and use it on a membership basis but there's a free solution and i want to make sure that i emphasize the, the the free because if we're going to make an impact on humanity then we have to give people things that they could do tomorrow that would have a positive impact you know on their on their state of optimal health and that don't cost them anything so if you think about um the last time you had bare feet touching bare soil i mean dirt grass sand not on top of pavement or or uh, you know wood or carpet the last time you had bare feet touching soil or sand that was the last time that you earthed or grounded human beings discharge into the earth we actually build up a charge and we discharge into the earth you can change the ph of the body by actually coming in contact with the earth and so if you don't want to put up the money for equipment in your home you can take your shoes off and walk on the surface of the earth and yes you can do this for short periods of time even if it's if it's cold outside um and the second thing you can do is you know we use oxygen we get magnetism from the earth we get oxygen from the uh you know from the air and we get light from the sun so if you um don't want to buy a hypermax oxygen system which will cost you five grand you can learn to do breath work and breath work is free um wim hof is my favorite method i mean his teachings are all over the internet i if you if you follow me on instagram you'll see that every single day without failure 
I do three rounds of 30 breaths. I spend eight minutes breathing every morning. I will miss a commercial flight to not miss breath work. I what is, what is psycho the, about what it. What does the breath work do for you? So what it does is, um, you know, Wim Hof and now other follow-up clinical research has proven that actually breath work is more powerful than meditation. You know, the Humorman podcast just had a little episode on this. Um, uh, I'm a big, big, big fan of Humorman. Humorman. Uh, they've proven that um, you can change the oxygen tension in your tissue through breath work. You know, I have a saying after 22 years of spending my life in the mortality space predicting death to the month. And yes, we predicted death to the month. I have a saying that the presence of oxygen is the absence of disease. And there is nothing more profound or true than that statement. The presence of oxygen is the absence of disease. I challenge any physician or healthcare practitioner to give me a single disease etiological pathway of any kind that does not have its roots in a lack of blood oxygen, hypoxia. All cancer begins in a hypoxic environment. So what we want to do is we want to get more oxygen into the blood. And we want to raise our mood. Did I get a bomb for that? That one for that sure. Was, dude, that was awesome. Because, dude, that's the that's the cause of it all. Oh, that's the cause of it all. Um, so, you know, if you, if you raise the oxidative state in the body, you actually raise your mood, you raise your emotional state. You know that elevated emotional tears, emotions like passion, elation, joy, arousal, libido, every single one of these emotional states as a component of its molecular structure, require oxygen. You guys, if you're an entrepreneur, if you're running a business, if you're working long hours, more energy, better sleep, better. I'll tell you the top five things that I see um, that methylation fixes is gut issues. About 80% of the patients that come into our clinic that think they have allergies don't have allergies at all. They have an issue with intestinal motility, which is why they get a colonoscopy, it's normal. They get an endoscopy, it's normal. Do a stool sample, it's normal. They start taking probiotics, it doesn't help. They change their diet, it doesn't help. They eat the same thing Monday and have no reaction. They eat the exact same thing on Tuesday and they blow up like a tick. Gas, bloating, diarrhea, constipation, cramping, all that kind of stuff. And it drives them crazy because they're trying to find an allergy. It has nothing to do with what you're eating. It has to do with the pace of the gut, how quickly things are moving down that conveyor belt. Because the gut's very orderly and it has to go in order. It has to go from one bacteria to another, to another, to another, and then out. If you accelerate that process, you find that you have chronic gut issues. And most people that have chronic issues with their gut have also suffered from anxiety their entire lifetime. Mm. They're carried on the same gene. And they're being told that they have generalized anxiety or generalized depression. They've been on depression um, medication on and off throughout their lifetime. And they actually don't have depression or anxiety. They've got a deficiency in methylation. Maybe their microbiome is messed up. You blame it on the microbiome, but then you fix the microbiome and it doesn't fix it. And the issue is not the microbiome very often. It's the pace of the gut. Think about it. Your gut's 30 feet long, right? As you approximate the stomach, it's very acidic. As you approximate the rectum, it's very basic. If I accelerate... Have you ever I, approximated your rectum? Um, as a matter of fact, I haven't. Uh, approximated my rectum, but I'm gonna I'm gonna point my rectum at the sun and see if it raises my <laughs> testosterone though. After this podcast, um, well, but, that's not where the scrotum is. Well, I know, but I think if I'm gonna expose the rectum, I can also expose the scrotum. It's sort of right. in the same neighborhood, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah they just got a little highway there, the taint. You know, you, you but you only want to do that if you uh, make sure that you don't have a broken flutter valve. <laughs> You don't Man, want, you I'm don't, learning a lot of new anatomy. You don't want today. a bad. You don't want a bad flutter valve. But no kidding. So they take this swab. It'll show these markers, and then they can they can take what different nutrients, different things that they're that they're deficient, and then correct those things. Yeah, you take what's called the methylated form of solve nutrient. anxiety. Solve anxiety. Most people that have anxiety have three characteristics. They've had it on and off their entire lifetime. I don't like that anxiety shit. Thank God I've never had it. But let me tell you something. Oh, excuse me. One day I woke up. I felt anxious. I felt like, like you ever like rob a bank? I haven't, but. Well, if you ever robbed a bank and there's cops behind you and you fucking know that they know mm -hmm. that gut feeling, is that anxiety? That's anxiety. Yeah. So the other day I woke up and out of the blue, I just felt like that for about 30 minutes. It was crazy. And I'm thinking that's maybe because I'm getting older. It's a fear of something happening in the future. But I've never had it. And that's what I felt like. And I thought, this is bullshit. So. Um, I don't remember. Probably something. I don't know. But, but, I, did, but I didn't like it. So if there's people that live with anxiety, dude, oh. they need to get a mouse swap. And if you talk to people that have anxiety and you ask them, can you point to the specific trigger that causes it? Very often they'll say no. 
right there, you know it's coming from your physiology. It's not coming from the outside world because you woke up in the morning feeling anxious. I always thought it was mental. It's not mental. It's a mental state, but it's not coming from your mental. It's not coming from the mental being. It's coming from your physiology. You're physiologically deficient in certain nutrients. You can't lower uh, an inflammatory compound called homocysteine. And when you can't do that, you have anxiety. In fact, most people that have anxiety have a parent that has one parent that has hypertension, and they have another parent that has hypothyroid. Because that same gene that you inherit that doesn't allow you to methylate the nutrients that don't give you anxiety also leads to hypertension, leads to hypothyroid. So these things run in families, but it's not the disease that's genetic. It's the inability to convert certain nutrients. You know, you think about, we take, uh, I always use the example that we take crude oil out of the ground, right? But you can't put crude oil directly into your gas tank, right? The car doesn't understand crude oil. It has to be refined into gasoline, The human body goes through that same process. You put raw materials into the human body. It doesn't use them in the form you take them in. Nothing that you put into the human body gets used in the format that you put it in. So if people are listening, they want to do one of those mouth swabs and get a hold of you, get some blood work done and and get you to dial them in like you do all the athletes and celebs and Mm -hmm. whatnots. Even bloodlet. Are we going to bloodlet? Before or after? Yeah, right. As soon as that IV is done, she's going to put that IV below the level of the heart. So you're just going to lower it, then mm-hmm. it's going to fill with blood? Yes. <laughs> I don't know if I like that idea. As soon as I said fill with blood, my head got light. <laughs> That's your flutter valve. So you're going to lower that, and it's going to start bleeding? Yeah. Uh, you're gonna, I say the same thing to every patient. Don't look down, and then the first, first? thing they do is look down. Well, what if it, what if it sucks it all right back out? How do you know? Yeah, that, that fluid is all throughout your body right now. It's all throughout your body. No, I know, but if we but if we put in the vitamins and then it sucks the vitamins out, a very very just, small percentage of those going to come out. Vitamins. No, you're going to stick it in, then you're going to suck it right back out. <laughs> we can use it. Put, it. put it in the next guy. It's yeah, a, that, I was going to say great business. Go plan. sell that. Like you're going to show the look at the triglycerides in this blood, bro. Oh yeah, I'm putting. Your, by the way, I'm putting you your donate, blood on eBay. When you donate blood, sometimes. I've seen people sell blood, plasma. Ooh. Yeah, like when my, when my brothers would go sell plasma, they'd pay them. Oh, yeah. and Valuable stuff. I went to do it once, I think, but ne- <laughs> never again. But, like, my brother would sell plasma as often as they'd let him. Oh, yeah. yeah. That plasma is really. Now, now, I say if you ever want a free test to see if there's something wrong with you, just go offer to donate blood. Because when you walk in there, they won't take your blood if you got shit wrong with you, do, will they? That's right, yeah. They, they won't take your blood if you have a really elevated hematocrit, which is your blood viscosity, if it's really thick. Are they ta- Are they take, checking you for COVID? They're checking you for AIDS? They're checking you for something, right? Not before you donate blood. They'll check you for COVID before you donate blood. They'll check your hematocrit, but they don't run the AIDS test and all those other viral pathogen tests until the blood goes back to the lab. Then they run against everything. They run a huge panel on that stuff. But they won't take you again, would they? No. So if you got something wrong with you, dude, they won't let you do that. Right. Yeah, it's a great way. It's free. And, and it's hopefully, really, the, really you know, good for you. I don't have you. a thumb that grows out of my forehead here in a second. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, or any kind of. Uh, yeah. Yee, here we go, dirty dogs. Well, listen, <laughs> I, I tell everybody that's listening right now, you know, the Myers cocktail and everything felt Felt, you know, almost like I'm drunk a little. Yeah, Mars cocktails are great. You know, but I, I, I would say, you know, to replenish the hydration and the and everything from a from a cellular level, I think it's highly recommended. Now, what about brain? Now, what about brain fog? You know, brain fog is the same thing. You know, most people that have brain fog um, also have poor sleep patterns. Right, because it's again, it's an inability to quiet the mind. So when their environment quiets, their mind wakes up. So they have one of two types of sleep patterns: they either go to bed tired and have a hard time falling asleep because their mind keeps them awake, or they fall asleep and they have a hard time staying asleep because their mind wakes them up. And if you ask them the kind of thing they're thinking about, they're thinking about the the most strange, just innocuous thoughts. Nothing that should be keeping them up at night. Like you know, did I get everything on my grocery list? Uh, does my belt match my shoes? Did I return that email today? Uh, I forgot to do that Instagram post. Little like nagging things like that because they lack a, um, uh, an amino acid called L-methionine, which helps to quiet the mind. 
right? So the same way that we create thought, we actually degrade thought. We dismantle thought the same way we create it. So if you are good at creating thoughts, but you're not good at dismantling them, degrading thoughts, then your brain gets clouded and, it, and you stay awake. Kids with ADHD also tend to be night owls because that gene that doesn't allow them to methylate folic acid also doesn't allow them to quiet their mind. And these are the kind of kids that when they're really young, they end up in mom and dad's bed by the morning because they'll wake up at night. And when a kid wakes up at night and their mind starts running, it starts thinking about all the things that make them scared, right? So alligators under the bed and there's a shark in the closet, you know, um, they hear a little noise and then they get up and pitter patter right in the mom's bedroom. Classic sign of methylation. If somebody wants a good night's sleep, can they take some sort of supplement to get that? So if you want a really good night's sleep, have your blood work done and make sure that your blood transports oxygen well. You know, I ask tons of physicians and all kinds of people, why is it that people that are the most exhausted sleep the worst? And very few people can answer that question. And the reason is um, because of low blood oxygen. When you're, when you're low on energy, what you're really low on is you're low on oxygen. So if you said, Gary, I had a lot of energy today, physiologically what you're saying is I had a lot of oxygen in my blood today. So if we know oxygen equals energy, then if we get more oxygen into the blood, if we raise our red blood cell count, raise hemoglobin, transport oxygen well, we'll not only have more energy, but think about what happens when you sleep, right? Your respiration rate starts to drop. And as your respiration rate gets really, really, really low, if you're low, if you're poorly transporting oxygen, when your blood oxygen gets too low, your brain panics and it wakes you up. So how does it wake you up? It pulses cortisol. So people that are tired during the day. See what I mean? Like, that's amazing. They look like a bouncing rubber ball going down. But that's a machine, like an automated thing. Like, hey, this dude needs some oxygen. Boop. Let me just give him a little cortisol, wake oh, yeah. his ass up. Yeah, that's what the brain does. Now, it doesn't wake you up till you you know, like up and standing like, hey, let's play tennis. You know, it takes you from delta wave sleep, deep sleep, into alpha beta, right? It just takes you up into a lighter um, level of sleep. So you've been, quote, unquote, sleeping for six, eight, nine hours, and you don't wake up rested. If you're sleeping that long and you're not waking up feeling rested, you have poor oxygen transport. You need to get your red blood cell count and your hemoglobin checked. And it's likely because your hormones are off. Now I go to bed at about 11 o'clock, maybe 12 sometimes. I wake up at anywhere between 4 to 6. So I'll get anywhere from 5 to 6 hours of sleep, and I okay. feel like a champ. Okay, so you're either on testosterone therapy or you have um, optimal levels of the hormone testosterone. No question. One of the two. Or both. Or both. <laughs> but, but, but that's been my whole life. You know, because, well, then you've had, you've had adequate hormone levels your whole life. See, most people, when they, when they get a hormone test done, especially men, they, they want to be on testosterone for the muscles and for, you know, for the uh, erectile function and for the libido. But the truth is the primary role of testosterone in men and women is not male characteristics. The primary role of testosterone is to put pressure on the bone marrow to create new red blood cells. Mm. So if you're low in testosterone, you're likely low on red blood cells and hemoglobin, which means you transport oxygen very poorly. That's why when people start taking hormone therapy, they feel better because it's really, their, the, what they're feeling is an increased level of oxygen transport. Well, when I was a child, I slept forever. Mm -hmm. So I thought that your testosterone is higher as a teenager. It is. So when I when my testosterone was that high, I would sleep for like ten hours. Yeah, it's not not abnormal at all for teenagers to sleep that long. In fact, I, I think the I whole thought the higher the system, testosterone, the less sleep. The higher the testosterone, the better the sleep, not the less sleep. So during that time when you're growing, regenerating, repairing, detoxifying, eliminating waste, you know, at that that time of your life is when you need the most sleep. It's funny because younger kids go to school later, and older kids go to school earlier. You know, when our kids were going to school. They started at 9 o'clock in the morning when they were in 6th grade. By the time they were in high school, they had to leave the house at 6.30 in the morning. It should be the opposite, right? Teenagers need more sleep. They're growing, right? Their bones are growing. Their brain's growing. They're, they're, they're metabolizing. Their muscles are getting bigger. The, and that's because what? You know, the hormones are starting to flood their system. They actually need more sleep, not less. So if somebody's out there entrepreneurial, they're burning the candle at both ends. They they feel like shit, but they know they got to power through. What would you tell them? See, nobody should be powering through anything. You know, if you're if you have to quote unquote power through, that means that your physiology is not on your team. 
right? You want to put your physiology on your team. Most of us have our, our, the physiology, our, 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 um, our biome is like an anchor off our stern. You want to roll that thing up and put it on the boat, you know, so you can cruise. You want to have your physiology on your team. So if you have a roadmap for your business and you know your your balance sheet and your income statement and your P&L and you're running your marketing and you're looking at all your metrics for social media, you need to apply that same level of attention to your blood, right? Because it's more important than all of those things. And most of us right now can't say what their hormone levels are. What What's going on with my triglycerides, my cholesterol? What's my PSA? What kind of inflammation do I have in my body? Most of us don't know that. And we don't even put the same level of attention into our body that we do our business's balance sheet. But we want to. We need to. You absolutely need to. I mean, you want to accelerate the growth of your business. You want to change your frequency. Um, you want to emote a frequency of success and attract, you know, um, the things in your life that you're, you're envisioning that you, you're trying to manifest. You got to improve your physiology. Where's your brick and mortar? You have brick and mortars? We have brick and mortars, but 70% of our patients have never stepped foot in one of our clinics. I mean, Grant and I are about to put, put them all over the country. We, we expect to have close to a thousand locations in 36 months, but that's. You're going to need a training system. Trust me. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know some people that have a training system. That's yeah. right. Uh-huh. So so if someone's listening to this and they want to get their blood work done, they want to get the swab, mm-hmm. do they come to you? Or? Send me a message on Instagram. My staff will reach back out to them. They'll send them a new patient link, and we'll overnight the swab right to their house. They can and, cheek swab themselves and put it back in the envelope. And then within a couple of days, they're, they're what, dialed in? The results come back, and we get them on the phone. We tell them exactly what nutrients they're deficient in. So they're no longer supplementing just for the sake of supplementing. Right, they're supplementing for an actual deficiency. And if you've never supplemented for a real deficiency in your body, you don't know how good supplements can make you feel. Most of us just have a cabinet full of supplements because we read an article in Men's Health or you know, saw a, a buddy said, man, it takes all palmento. It makes you feel great. Or I just want to look better, stay younger. It's easy. So anything that has to do with that, give it to me. Yeah, I'm getting it right now. <laughs> look better, stay younger. Mm-hmm. Look better. Stay younger. I already, I already, I already feel great. That's the thing. Uh-huh. I'm lucky. Like guys, I grew up with. They were buff in school. I wasn't really buff in school. I didn't look bad, but I didn't look buff. Why? Because they were at the gym all the time, and I wasn't. Well, now they're walking around like old men. With you know, one of them says they have fibromyalgia. I'm like, oh I think that's God. a girl's yeah. disease, isn't it? It's just a nonsense. Yeah, but that's a girl's disease, isn't it? It's not not necessarily a girl's disease. I just don't think that it exists. It's a cop out when they don't know what's wrong with you. Well, that's it's what like he chronic said. They say he has it, and, and, and I looked it up, and I'm like, it, basically, syndrome. women have fibromyalgia more than more than anybody. Yes, but to me, it's like it, this constant pain, and you know, I I attest that to where they beat up their bodies their whole life. I didn't. I took a nice smooth, like I worked out a little bit. You know, I listened to my body when my muscles were sore. I stopped going to the gym. Why? Well, my muscles were sore. <laughs> right. Like, and to me, the body's pretty intelligent. I think soreness was probably its way of saying, hey, slow down, champ. Mm-hmm. So I slowed down. They didn't. They said, oh, dude, you're a puss. You got to power through that. And a lot of people do. You know, they wear the wraps. You see the guys at the gym with the yeah. wraps. Yep. Well, I didn't do all that. And now I have no pain. Yep. I have no joint issues. Yep. I don't get up and be like, oh. Well, lifting heavy weights is a recipe for longevity. You know, I always say that that aging is the aggressive pursuit of comfort. And we age faster the more aggressively we seek comfort. You know, we always tell grandma, don't go outside, it's too cold. Don't go outside, it's too hot, grandma. Just lay down and relax. Just just rest. You know, um, you eat at the first pang of hunger. You know, we weren't meant to have a cabinet full of crackers, you know, three feet off of our elbow, you know, 24 hours a day. Most of us are eating ourselves to death. The worst advice ever given in the history of mankind was to eat small meals more often. That's horrible for you. What's the best advice? To, to spend a, a minimum of 12 hours eating and 12 hours fasted. You know, our body only repairs, regenerates, detoxifies, and eliminates waste when we're not digesting. You see, we like to think that our brain and our bodies are very, very sophisticated. It's not. It's very primal. It cares about survival. It doesn't care about your skin. It doesn't care how pretty you are. It cares about survival. And so digestion, evolutionarily, um, equated survival. Because if I can eat, I'm, I'm going to live. So it takes a very high priority in the body. As soon as you put food in, everything else stops. So if you're eliminating waste, you stop. Repairing, you stop. Um, detoxifying, regenerating. Those processes come to a halt 
your body focuses on digestion. And only when it's done digesting does it go back to doing those processes. You want, you want mental clarity to go through the roof. You want boundless energy. Start learning how to intermittent fast. Take, take a 12-hour break from eating. Eat in a 12-hour window. When you say eat, does, what, what's included in that? Like, well, you, you, can, you can take in a high amount of calories in a short period of time. But it's, does it have to be solid food or can it be liquid? That's eating. Yeah, liquid's eating too. But, I mean, just a, nothing out of a wrapper, you know, whole foods. So when you say fast, though, no food, no liquid, no uh, no nothing. food, uh, no just no water. no food, just water. Just so water. isn't that doesn't everyone do that when they go to sleep at night? Everyone does it when they go to sleep at night, but then they wake up at six thirty in the morning, and they have coffee and a little bit of breakfast, and then they um and then they have coffee and a little bit of breakfast, and then they eat something before lunch, and then they eat at lunch, and then they eat a snack afterwards, and then they eat dinner late, and then they snack right before they go to bed. That's horrible. You're eating you're eating for eighteen hours. 12, 16, 18 straight hours you're eating, which means your body's not doing any waste elimination. What does it do to your blood? It thickens your blood and fills your blood full of things that your body's got to get rid of. I mean, your liver's working overtime, even if you eat a clean diet. Based on my blood, does, does my liver look functional? Your liver looks great. I can tell you right now, your cholesterol and your triglycerides are going to be excellent. See, cholesterol is another one of those massively misunderstood compounds in the human body. Right, I mean, cholesterol is not a fuel source. We can't use it for fuel. It's a it's a building block. Oh, I taste like toes or something. Toes? <laughs> I'm joking. I don't need a lot of toes. So. <laughs> Did you put any toe in that IV? Yeah, yeah sometimes Just we a put, little a, toe. put a little toe. Yeah, a little toe. It was the big toe? It, yeah. Um, it helps so what about like fatigue and muscle soreness and like? Yes, yeah, so fatigue and muscle soreness is poor waste elimination. Low levels of oxygen. So in, in the human body, we have, we have two choices inside of our cell. Okay, we have a little, little powerhouse, a little motor in every cell. Most of us have heard of it. It's called the mitochondria. And, and this is really what powers a human being, right? The more efficient this little organelle is, the healthier we are, the less sore we get, the faster we recover, the better our cognitive function, the deeper our sleep, the, the, uh, um, the greater our libido. So this little, this little mitochondria has a cool little motor in it that's spinning and spinning and spinning around called the Krebs cycle. Every time this motor makes one turn, it has two choices. It can either make two units of energy or it can make 32 units of energy. It's either 16 times more efficient or 16 times less efficient. There's no in-between, right? It's like a car that either has a 100-horsepower engine or a 1,600-horsepower engine. So we want the 1,600-horsepower engine. And the difference between whether it makes two or 32 is the presence of oxygen. It's anaerobic versus aerobic respiration. We all know it because we felt our muscles burn. When our muscles burn, we're in anaerobic respiration, which means we're producing lactic acid. When our muscles don't burn, we're in aerobic respiration, which means we're producing carbon dioxide. So the point is, if I can transport more oxygen, I can raise the blood oxygen content, I can not only recover from exercise better, but these mitochondria, instead of making two units of energy every time that motor turns, they're making 32 units of energy. You give that much extra power to the cell, imagine how much more waste elimination and repair and detoxification and regeneration. Imagine how much more a cell could do with 16 times the power of not having that. You know, sitting is the new smoking. It's the greatest mortality factor. Like sedentary? Sedentary lifestyle is the greatest mortality factor known to mankind right now. In fact, if, you know, when I was doing mortality predictions, one of the things I would look at is your ambulatory profile, which is how well you ambulate, how well you move. Are you moving a lot? You know, most of us have a lot of what's called static stress. We sit and we're staring at this thing and it brings stress into our life, but we're not encountering stress in a physical environment. You know, if you're fighting a tiger or you're running from a snake or you're trying to kill a cheetah or a hyena, um, the stress that you're experiencing, you're you're, you're, you're experiencing stress while you're breathing, while your muscles are working, and that stress is instantly gone from your body. When you stress in a static environment, the stress stays. It's kind of like a cold plunge. Cold plunge is excellent for you. That's one of the greatest biohacks, you know, of the recent decade is getting in cold water. You want to you strip fat off your body? Get in cold water. Really? You know, tell, oh, my God. You know, think of what a calorie is. Do you know what, do you know what the definition heat of unit. a calorie is? It's a measure of heat. Exactly. It's the amount of heat that takes to maze to raise one cubic centimeter of water, one degree centigrade. So a calorie is a measure of heat. So if heat is leaving your body, guess what's leaving your body? Weight? Calories. 
and wait. Yes. So how do we get heat to leave our body? We get in cold water. Water is 29 times more thermogenic than air, meaning it removes heat at 29 times the rate of air. So what temperature should the water be? Um, I say you start in the uh, high 50s because, you know, people go into cold plunging and they quit because they try to go too cold too fast. Right. I put 150 pounds of ice in a, in a, in a bathtub. What about just turning the water from warm to cold? Yeah, that's, I mean, every single one of us can do that. As I, long as you, as long as you do one of the yeah things that you do. Yeah. You just, you just breathe, take a deep breath. And then while you're letting that air out, step into that cold stream of water and then just deal with it for three minutes. It'll take you 30 seconds to acclimate in the next two and a half minutes. Boy, you'll get out of there. Your mood will be so elevated bolsters your immune system, reduces inflammation, does all kinds of things for you. And it starts to spark that um, transformation of, of fat from what's called white fat to brown fat, which is the kind of fat that can leave, turn into energy. My problem is when I turn it cold, it's not that cold. Yeah, it's not. It's hard to, if you're used to cold baths, cold showers are nothing. I took a cold shower this morning. And, and, it's, and it's not even that cold. Like we're in Vegas, like, dude, it's hard to get cold, cold water here. Right. But you can get ice. I have a commercial yeah, ice but machine. That's, that's work. Mine. That's effort. See, I don't. I, I try to avoid all that shit. Why? What do you mean? Why? Why avoid that? It's so good for you. Because it's you inconvenient. That's why they call it inconvenient. I don't uh, like shit that's aging inconvenient. Is the you know, a lot of these success of gurus out there in the world will tell you, you know, to get yourself uncomfortable. Yes. And I agree with it. Like like Andy Frisella, seventy five hard. Mm -hmm. He, you know, his whole program is not necessarily weight loss. It's to get you out of your comfort zone, right? So you can understand that your mental bitch voice can be controlled yes um so but i already know that so i don't ever have to do it so again to me like i already know that lesson so i don't have to be uncomfortable well that's... i like to be comfortable i like ranch dressing okay i mean you, i don't have a problem with ranch dressing per se but you, well, if you if you, you want to get rid body. of this you need ranch dressing be eliminated you need to eat fucking lettuce with just lemon juice on it or some bullshit <laughs> And I'm thinking to myself, dude, if that's what you got to do, then I don't need, I don't care. I'll take a little love handle. Right. Like who wants to get that uncomfortable? It's not that uncomfortable. Going it, to get it, 150 pound bags of fucking ice. What well, do you got? I'm, fucking I'm a little crazy about it. Freezers. I mean, you don't full. have to do that. Uh, no, I have a commercial ice machine in my laundry room. Yeah. See commercial ice machines. I got to go get one of those. It's like, you really got to want that shit to yeah. get that uncomfortable. And then you just feel great and you got incredible waking energy. And you Why don't you just install a water, a, a cold dip. Cause you, so, you, you know, some of those spas where you see them and they're like yeah. 42 degrees. Yeah, there's one called plunge is great. You, know, you, you uh, it keeps constant cold water, but they're like 4,500 bucks. Yeah. But that'd save you for how much you paying for Trust ice me, every if, day. If, if the woman three feet to my right would let me have one in our condo and we can barely walk around the place with all the biohacking stuff I have, but I want to, I want to throw out our grill and put in a cold plunge, but that's just me. So maybe, maybe we're getting permission for it right now. <laughs> well, if you guys move out of wherever you live, where you live, Naples or something? Um, we split time between Naples and uh, the Aventura area, North Miami. Yeah, see, so like get out of there and you'll find some real estate that doesn't cost so much. And yeah, you don't you get can, a lot for your money there, that's for sure. <laughs> and it's small. Then you can get, then you can put in cold plunges and shit. Yeah, but I just take the ice out of the ice machine and throw it in the bathtub. I'm going to try in. that. Real, the, you, no, you, would, you would say that the benefit of that is major. No question. The three things you got to do every day. One, two, and three. You have to breathe for eight minutes. I, I recommend that you do a Wim Hof style of breathing for eight minutes. It takes eight minutes. Which is what? Just um, taking a deep breath and letting it out and doing that 30 times. And at the end of your round of 30 breaths, you hold. After you exhale, you hold your breath as long as you can. And then when you can't hold your breath anymore, you're taking a long, deep breath. You hold that breath as long as you can, and you start again. Three rounds of 30 breaths with a breath hold in between. Just that will add seven years to your life. Wow. It is impossible to be in a bad mood after you do three rounds of 30 breaths. And if you study Wim Hof, he's also known as the Ice Man. I mean, they packed this guy in ice up to his neck for two hours, and his fingertips didn't even change temperature because he he's the one that really kind of put breath work on the map. He showed that we could change the oxygen tension in our tissues. And if we know that the presence of oxygen is the absence of disease, then we start with breath work in the morning. Your body will crave that breath work like a rat to cheese. It, you know, it's funny because sometimes I'll be watching a movie and I'll catch myself holding my breath. Like I'll, yeah. I'll just go. 
Yeah, I don't know if that's do good or bad, but it's not good. I will hold my breath, and I don't know why that is. And I can hold my breath for probably a minute and a half, which, mm-hmm. like underwater, <laughs> always been able to do that. But what's crazy is when I, I forget how old I was. I joined. I didn't join. I went and I entered this contest with some long distance runners, mm. and I started running, and I got into a rhythm where my breath work was just like. <sighs> Just, yeah. I mean, it was a, it was, there was a cadence to it. It yeah. was like a rhythm and I, and I freaking crushed and I yeah. don't know why I never ran out of breath. I just could keep running and running and running. And I think it was cause I had this breath cadence down. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Where do you, where do you study Wim Hof? You can, I mean, you can Google him. It's very easy. You can f- follow my Instagram. I teach people how to breathe on there all the time. I don't sell anything on Instagram. I just teach. You drop shit. So I just nuggets. drop knowledge, knowledge bombs, health, so knowledge. Much, health knowledge. That's it. Um, but you know, if you, so you breathe for eight minutes, then you apply physical stress. I prefer weight bearing exercise, weight bearing exercise in nearly every clinical study known to mankind crushes cardiovascular exercise so in breathe, the same time frame. lift weights, breathe, lift weights, and then apply a thermal stress, either get hot or get cold, get in a sauna or get in a cold shower or cold plunge every day, every day, um, uh, five days a week, every day, every day, cold shower, every day. It's not hard. You take a, Can you take a warm shower, then a cold shower? Yes, you can take a warm shower, and then you can turn it cold, step out, and then just let that cold water hit you. Because, see, what you're doing is you're not only putting oxygen into the blood, right, and then you're applying a physical stress. Why are you putting oxygen? Because you're going, <sighs> yeah, so much. Because <sighs> when you get cold, that's what you feel like. Yeah, and so when you first start cold, um, when you st- first start getting into cold water, I tell people to box breathe, which is a four-second inhale, a four-second hold, Four second exhale and a four second hold. It's like a square, right? So you do that box breathing and you'll get right through that that initial shock of the cold. After thirty seconds, it'll start to feel good. And I promise you, you do that for seven days, you will crave it every day. Your body will crave it like we crave a cup of Starbucks. I'm gonna start doing it. Yeah. Do those three things. Let's for, see you get me ripped. Oh, I can get you ripped. Like ripped, oh, shredded. I can down you to the it. down to the abs physical i mean a physiological superhuman once really? we dial your blood work in yeah you're not well you got the blood yourself. work you got the swab yeah. and folks if you're listening you want the blood work in the swab just dm him yeah. hit him up in the dm tell him you're from the bomb squad <laughs> i'm glad that you told me that so if someone didn't text me and say they were from the bomb squad and i delete them yeah bomb squad <laughs> bomb squad that's who's listening the bomb squad awesome you know, and and they're and they n- number one I got all kinds of people following me, so, you know. That's great. But but they do react. I got a loyal fan base that, like, engages. They buy books if you have them. They mm-hmm. freaking do shit. They, they reach out. They follow you. You'll get followers. Great. And uh, you might get some shit talkers, too, because guess what? I, I got a bunch of health people following me. They'll be like, ah, this guy's full of oh. shit. And then, you know. Listen, I love to be Polyunsaturated hydrocarbons don't float through the medulla. <laughs> <laughs> that was me, folks. That wasn't him. <laughs> But you'll get a lot of you'll get a lot of action off this. I uh, love it. W- the number one thing that y- that you offer that they should do is the swab, a cheek swab. I think it's just the most important single test because you, you do it once in your lifetime. And then what though? And then like, you forever you, you, know what supplement you need. So then you you tell them, okay, here's the results, and that'll tell them, hey, you need A, D, and you need B complex. You need hydroxycobalamin. You need L-methionine. You need zinc, magnesium. And if someone goes specific. and gets all that. Then, they, then they'll, they're going to feel what a real baseline sense of normalcy really feels like. And if they're anxious, they'll quit being anxious. And absence of anxiety. Like depressed, they'll quit being depressed. All of those conditions are just the absence of raw materials. You know, the absence of dopamine is the presence of addiction. But we never treat the deficit in dopamine. And that's why addiction shifts. We rarely cure addiction. It actually just shifts. If you talk to somebody who's an alcoholic and has been sober for, um, let's say, 25 years. You say, when was the last time you thought about having a drink? They'll say, how, how long does that take? Huh? Yeah. Yeah. Strain your arm to go faster. You're, you're, you're dripping at a good rate. You guys are going slow yeah. row. Yeah. But you put raw materials in, you have the body start to produce that, that, that neurotransmitter and, and, and addiction eviscerates. If you've got a child right now, I tell the parent, I give the parents a little tip. If you've got a kid right now that can play video games for more than five or six hours straight, that's a future addict. You know, no, that's me. A, you need to get a hold of that kid. I could do right that. Now, get the cheek swab and, and get that kid taking methylated vitamins. How long until my results come back? Um, five days. Roughly. Folks, get your, get, as soon as you hear this episode, get your cheek swabbed, get your results, get your shit in order, especially if you want to be, number one, live a long time. Mm-hmm. 
I hear there's kids alive today that'll live to 800 years old. People are like, come on, dude. Like with the medicine and the AI and the, I've heard. 140, 140, 160. Absolutely. The people alive today. No, no you, you Google, Google this. You'll read the article I read. It basically said <clears throat> there are people alive right now that will live to 800 years old mm. with the medical advancements we're seeing. Stem cells. Freaking unbelievable, you know, yep. artificial intelligence. They, you know, f- f- printing hearts. You can print a heart now. Yeah. I mean, they're, they're that, producing that work. meat. Yeah. They're producing, um, they're producing animal less meat. They're basically taking stem cells from a cow and culturing in, an, in a laboratory, culturing meat and actually using stem cells to command an organ to grow meat. And it's the purest meat on the planet. It's obviously, you know, grass fed. It's, um, it's, it's hydrated, it's infused, and there's no animal connected to it. Nobody's being slaughtered. Nobody's in pain. Nobody's being um, tortured or corralled. It's, it's animalless meat. And there's cloning. There's cloning. Where they literally can clone people. Yes, and that's kind of scary. I mean, that level of genetics is pretty, pretty scary. CRISPR technology and that kind of technology. To me, um, it's not really scary. To me, it's like exciting. Like, I'd love to be able to clone me. I'd love to. 50 of me as long as they work for me <laughs> like the original should be the one in charge well what does brad would bradley work for bradley oh fuck yeah dude. Bra- i don't bradley know would love bradley. <laughs> bradley bradley would love real. bradley bradley would show up fucking excited to say important for duty sir why Whoa. because we, now we know we're all going crazy mm. i i think bradley would want to take over bradley's business so that he could be bradley and i would and bradley would let him so bradley could whip bradley's ass in a heartbeat <laughs> that's why i want a hundred of them because i'd literally staff this whole place with bradley's and i'd go fishing yeah but you got anything for old eyes well i mean a lot of times what happens you get inflammation in the eye it actually changes the intraocular pressure if you return intraocular pressure to normal you return the eye shape to normal now i don't know if you have an astigmas or some other no. ailment something going wrong with 2020 the- vision it's just uh, at least the the eye doctor said as you get older, it stops flexing. Hmm. And when it flexes microscopically, you're focusing. Mm-hmm. So basically, the older you get, the less it will flex and focus. Because he said I had 20 20. And I'm like, dude, I need readers. Like, I can't tell if that's one R or two. Yeah, he's talking about intraocular pressure, right? So if the intraocular pressure increases, think of a balloon. If you add air to it, it gets less flexible. If you take air out of it, it will get more flexible. So, so the main way to like start this whole party is to get your blood work. The main thing that you want to do, there if was, you only did one test in your lifetime, you'd want to do the gene test. Yeah, that's the one I'm talking about. And then the second one you'd want to do is the blood work. You'd want to do this. I don't know. if the, Are we on camera? Yep. Can they see that? So this is this is Brad's. Brad has the MTHFR gene mutation. I won't tell you what the nickname is for that gene. And you asked if it was red or yellow. It's I see red. a red and a yellow. Yeah. So this is um, this is a complete inability to, to process folic acid. Right? So you're... Uh, that doesn't sound like a big and, deal. And by the way, by the way, my kids might have the same thing or do. If I do, they do. A hundred percent. If you're red, they, they are at least yellow. So you get one copy from one parent, one copy from the other parent. Um, MTHFR is the most common gene mutation in the world. 44% of the population has it. Um, ironically, 44% of the population reports being on an antidepressant at some point in their lifetime. And this, when, when folic acid, which is the most prevalent nutrient in the human diet, when we take in folic acid, it's in all white flour, white rice, white bread, white pasta, all of our is grains, for us? all of our cereals, it's horrible for you. So you don't want folic acid? No, we don't want folic acid. Folic acid doesn't occur is anywhere that, naturally in nature. But is that red say I don't process it? You That's do good. not process it. That's no, good. No, you do not process it. So you can't turn it into the active form that your body needs. You see, there's not a single compound known to mankind, not one, that enters the human body that's used in the format that we put it in. Everything that enters the human body gets converted into its usable form, right? This conversion is called methylation, right? It's like we pull crude oil out of the ground, but you can't put crude oil directly into your gas tank, right? Because the car doesn't understand that fuel source. Crude oil has to be refined into gasoline, Well, that refining process in the human body is called methylation. And if your methylation is broken, you get things like anxiety, anxiousness, depression, ADD, ADHD, 
OCD. You have trouble falling asleep because your mind keeps you awake. Now, now would I be an anomaly if I said none of those? No. Even no. with the red? Well, because you're probably not eating a lot of folic acid. I bet your yeah. diet is not full of white bagels, white rice, no, white a lot of low pasta, carb. white white flour. If you if you were eating a lot of grains, flours, breads, pastas, um, whites, you would it would be a disaster for you. So the it's one of the leading causes of postpartum depression in pregnant females because sadly what happens is 44% of women have this gene mutation too. And then they get pregnant and the doctor tells them to take high doses of folic acid. Even even though folic acid doesn't occur anywhere naturally in nature, it doesn't occur anywhere on the surface of the earth. Right? They they say take this unnatural man-made chemical because it'll prevent neural tube defects. Well, 44% of the population can't process it. So when they take 1400% of the daily allowance of, of folic acid, they get depressed and, and then eventually the pregnancy ends and, and they stop taking the prenatal vitamin and the symptoms go away. So they blame it on the pregnancy, not on the vitamin. Mm. And, and this is true with so many different conditions in the human body. You know, there are a lot of genetically inherited diseases we call genetically inherited diseases but no physician can tell you what gene is being passed from generation to generation to cause those diseases to be inherited. And if there isn't a gene associated with it, well, then it's not genetic. And we've mapped the entire human genome. There are no genes in the human body we're unaware of. So if there was a gene that caused a specific disease, we'd know that. Like the BRCA gene, you know, predisposes women to breast cancer. But That's close to the BRCA gene. It's close to the BRCA gene. <laughs> which will, which will, which will apparently Won't cause a cancer. squeezing sensation in S the breast. Squeezing sensation. Come in Tokyo. <laughs> Boy, we just really went off. Can we cut this part out? <laughs> Is this live? Hey, so, <laughs> well, the number one, um, the pills you sent me. Yes. The five. Five methylfolate. Yeah, the five methylfolate. So I just start taking one of you those. You call them the morning. five motherfucker pills. Yeah. It's well, five MTHF. Yeah, well, that I call that the motherfucker gene. It is the motherfucker gene. <laughs> so I got the motherfucker gene. So the, these pills, if I take it, then now I will process folic acid as it should be. It's not that you'll process folic acid. Is that we're we're not going to give you crude oil. We're going to give you gasoline. In other words, since your body can't refine folic acid into methylfolate, we're just going to give you methylfolate. But should I stop? Should I? Take in as low amounts as I can. Yes, I would take in as little folic acid as you can. Think about this. You know, we, we when we started spraying the grain supply in 1992, the U.S. federal government decided we would spray our entire grain supply with folic acid, this man-made chemical. And so all grains, all all rice, all flour, we, we don't call it sprayed with folic acid. We call it fortified or enriched, right? So if you spin a box of crackers around, you see the words fortified or enriched, that means sprayed with folic acid. Mm. And so now let's take a child, six, seven, eight years old, nine years old, and they're getting ready for school in the morning. They have this gene mutation and you've pumped them full of folic acid laden foods. Think about what we feed kids, pop tarts, white bagels, cocoa puffs, um, cocoa puffs, cereals, right? Any of those things. Now you just dumped folic acid into their body. And you wonder why it's a full contact sport to get the kid in the car to go to school. And then by the time they get to school, this, you know, the teacher's calling saying, hey, little Johnny can't, he can't pay attention. He doesn't concentrate, doesn't focus. He doesn't finish his assignments. He's not following directions. He's got ADHD. We need to bring in the Ritalin to control this. And the truth is ADHD is, is not even an attention deficit disorder at all. It's an attention overload disorder. Kids and, and adults that have this condition of, of attention deficit or attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, they don't have a problem paying attention. They have a problem paying attention to too many things. And in our mind, we not only create thought, but we also dismantle thought. It is just as important to be able to dismantle the neurotransmitters of thought as it is to create the neurotransmitters of thought. Because if I am creating thought at a faster rate than I'm dismantling it, then I have too many conversations going on in my head, right? So if you have ADD, then you're thinking about a job that you're working on and your friend walks up. And you start talking to your friend while you're thinking about this job you're working on and then you notice a logo on their jacket and that reminds you of a vacation you want to take. So now you're thinking about a job, talking to your friend, looking at the logo, thinking about a vacation you want to take. You know, and all of a sudden your friend goes, hey man, my grandma passed away on Sunday. And you go, that's a great idea. 
because you're not tuned into that conversation because your mind's everywhere else. And then what the modern medicine wants to do is give you an amphetamine to speed up, race the central nervous system to match the pace of the mind instead of putting just amino acids into the bloodstream that allow the mind to naturally quiet itself. You know, this gene mutation right here, COMT, if that gene mutation is read, you are highly susceptible to ADD, ADHD, OCD, depressive symptoms. Yellow's right? on the way to red? Yellow's on its way to red, but it'll never be red in your case. Once it's yellow, it's always yellow. So, and, 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 and so you, what would make that flawless like my blood? Well, you, you can't fix the genes. You can supplement for their function, right? So I can't fix those genes. The, the genes you're born with are the genes you die with, but you can supplement for their function. If yeah. MTHFR converts folic acid into methylfolate, you just supplement with methylfolate. There's certain forms of B12 in the middle here that if people are supplementing with the wrong form of B12, they're destroying their gut function, right? The most common form of B12 in the world is entirely synthetic. It's man-made. We make it from hydrogen cyanide. It's called cyanocobalamin. It's a cyanide-based B12. I mean, it's hard to believe that we're allowed to make vitamins out of hydrogen cyanide in this country, but we are. Flintstone vitamins have cyanocobalamin. So um, do airborne. So do Celsius energy drinks, right? Um, that's why, what's that? Emergency. Yeah, emergency has cyanocobalamin, cyanide-based B12. So when you put this form of B12 into the body, it drops off the cobalt metal, the cobalamin, right? Which is B12 is a metal, a light metal. It drops off the metal into the cell, and then you're left with a floating cyanide molecule. Now the body doesn't recognize that. So in order for cyanide to leave the system, it binds to oxygen and other light metals and takes them out of the system. It's a thief, right? Like folic acid is a thief. But we've been led to believe, oh, folic acid prevents neural tube defects in pregnant women. And folic acid is a necessary part of the human diet. It's a, there's a recommended daily allowance of folic acid. I don't know how we have a recommended daily allowance of something that was never on the face of the earth until a laboratory made it. I mean, how could it be essential for, for health if we actually made it in a lab? Can, can those pills be taken by my kids? Oh, no question they can be taken by your kids. It works with the Any gummies age? all the way down to two years old. So they can chew and swallow. But I mean, is there, a, is there like a, an amount I'm, I, you prescribe oh, yeah, to it's me? Pro it's appropriate for their So uh, you don't weight. give your kids your D, no. D5 methylionamide? No. In fact, you know, right on here, um, I got a chart that actually you gives you the ages. Tested, correct? It says age four to eight, nine to 13, 14 to 18. You should definitely have your kids tested. You only do the test once in your life. Most of us are supplementing just for the sake of supplementing. So gene right? test, folks, I'm telling you right now, go get a gene test. That, that's life changing. And you don't go to 10X Health Systems for that. You go to at Gary Brecca on Instagram and DM his ass, right? Yeah, just DM me and I'll... I can't believe you don't have a page or something, though. No, you can get it at, at 10X Health System, too. Oh, yeah, okay. yeah me the one. Well, I just want to make sure people have the the clear tactical to to because a lot of this is interesting. People are like, "Yeah, that might be me. I got kids mm -hmm. like that." Da da da. And then, and oh, then if you've got kids with ADD, ADHD, OCD, if you've got depression, if you have anxiety, uh, in in my, almost my my two, my little girl has anxiety. Like, dude, I'm telling you, sometimes I think to myself, like, like, what, what is she no, doing? No, she has a gene mutation that doesn't allow her to, it doesn't allow her to methylate something called homocysteine. I'll tell you three things about so her anxiety just get her without a gene even test. No question. And then you guys will prescribe her the 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 right vitamins, amount the of stuff, and then she'll take her it weight, and her problem will go away. No question. If you if you ask somebody that's suffering from anxiety three questions, you can prove that it's not coming from a cluster of symptoms. It's not coming from their outside environment. It's coming from their physiology. So the first question you ask them is, have you have you suffered from anxiety on and off throughout your entire lifetime? Almost always, they will say yes. And then the second question is, can you point to the specific trigger that causes it? Can you always just point to the specific trigger that's causing your anxiety? And the majority of the time they'll say no. I can just wake up in the morning feeling anxious. I can, I can be driving home from work on an otherwise innocuous day and I can be overwhelmed with anxiety. Um, and that must be a crazy feeling too. It's terrible because it drives them crazy because they don't know what's causing it. I mean, they can be in a calm environment like this. You know, my son's sitting there, you and I are just shooting the shooting the shit and all of a sudden I'm just overwhelmed with anxiety. It doesn't make sense to me 
psychologically because I go, well, there's nothing for me to be afraid of right now. Why do I have this fight or flight response? This, this lo looming death feeling. Yeah, but, it's a, but it's a lack of raw material in the human body. When you start pulling raw materials out of the human body, which by the way, can be put back in, then you get the appearance of all kinds of pathology and diseases, hypertension, ADD, ADHD, manic depression, bipolar, um, depression, anxiety, anxiousness. All of these conditions that we think happen to us are actually happening within us because you deplete the body of raw materials. You know, we define depression in this country as an inadequate supply of serotonin, right? So if your serotonin is low, you're by definition depressed. So you would think the treatment would be to raise serotonin, but that's not what we do. We take people that are depressed and we put them on SSRIs, serotonin reuptake inhibitors, right? And what these do is they ration what little serotonin you have, right? So by definition, it never raises serotonin. So by definition, it never ends depression. So any depressions by their own definition will never end depression. They will just keep it from getting worse. They'll keep you from going off a cliff. Um, so if we understood that serotonin is a raw material, it's made in the gut. 90% of the serotonin in our body is right here. If it's not here, it can't be here. So if I want to end depression, I need to turn the serotonin factory back on in the gut by putting the raw materials, B complex, methylated folates, B vitamins, hydroxycobalamin, L-methionine, zincs, magnesiums, back into the human body so it can produce neurotransmitters. Did you, is that part of all that shit you sent me? Yes. Mm -hmm. So all I got to do is take it. All you have to do is take it. Uh, there's, we're not adding anything to your bloodstream that's not already in your blood right now. We're just changing the form and the amount, mm. right? That's it. Hormonal balance. Hormonal balance. And the body Hormonal works balance. fine. That's so, it. so the gene test folks, I would go and get that gene test for you and your kids. And then the labs, the blood works after that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The gene test is like 599 bucks. You do it once in your lifetime, once in your lifetime. Cause yep. that shit don't change. You just need to yep. figure out what Never you are. Never changes. So you, only you know need to what do you're deficient. Once. And then that'll solve all kinds of depression, anxiety, all kinds of issues that you would think, you know, you've been taking medicine for. You don't Not only that, you'll know exactly how to supplement for the balance of your lifetime. You won't be guessing on, do I need St. John's wort and curcumin and CoQ10? And Does that increase longevity? Certainly increases longevity. If you look at methylation and longevity, if you just Google that, you'll see that um, perfecting the DNA replication process is a recipe for longevity. You got a 10X health in Vegas? Um, no, but we would love to open one here. You want to open one with us? Uh, yeah, well, it depends on what it costs, but yeah. <laughs> but I'm also in Nashville. You got one there? No, not yet. See, maybe I'll open here and there. That'd be great. And the dude you're going to see here in a minute, we won't mention any names. No. I'll bet you he'd open one like this. I bet he will too. Dude, I appreciate you swinging in. I, I'd keep talking to you. Awesome. You got to go or you're yep. going to miss your next appointment. Folks, if you go to the last episode, we got a little deeper and stuff. Mm -hmm. So go hunt down the last Gary Brecka episode and do yourself a favor, do your family a favor, go get the gene test, go get the blood test and start taking care of yourself until next time. Keep it real. You gotta get your guns, gotta get your ammo. You gotta change your perspective. You gotta reevaluate every area of your life right now. Number two is you eliminate the shit you don't want to tolerate. Okay, you, it's so easy to understand. Do you want to tolerate that anymore? And it might be, uh, I, I ain't tolerating his ass playing Call of Duty anymore. <laughs>